Hey, what's up, everybody? The uh, the Crap Gamer here, back with another Xbox Nation podcast, and I've got Iron Wolf with me, who is officially part of the cast now, and uh, we got Keep It Xbox himself, uh, Blaze and Phoenix here as well, and along with the ride is Mooch, and Blackie could show up at any time. I don't know. He's doing something, but I did give him the link so he can join at any time, and uh, we appreciate you guys taking time out to uh, join us tonight, and we're going to actually start off by talking a little bit about, you know, I, I wanted to jump into some game news a little bit. Forza Motorsport 6, um, you know, I'm playing it. I'm loving it. I'm 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 pretty much uh, you know ass deep into it. I'm almost level 20 already, uh, <laughs> over, like around 200 gamer scores. So so yeah, I'm I'm doing really well with it. I love it. It's just to me, this is what it's all about. You know what I mean? I, and even though we we complained earlier on in the year about the lack of games, um, and and I never bragged about stuff like Scream Ride or State of Decay or Ori or but you know there was always something to play. You know World of Tanks or uh, you know what I mean, and then of course Rare Replay kept me busy, and and of course Gears of War. I'm still on that. The multiplayer is phenomenal, mm-hmm. and uh, now you know it goes right into Forza, and I'm going to be playing that right into Halo Five. And I mean for me, Forza Forza Six, that is perfection. That and I'm going to have probably a review up in a day or two. I just want to get a little bit more uh, time with it before I go ahead and do that. And uh, you know, but for me, that game is just really well done. It's everything Turn Ten has been striving to do for years. And now they got it. They got that wet weather, and not only wet weather because that's been in other games. But when you hit those puddles, you hydroplane. Oh, I hate the puddles. Yeah, it's like poof, you know, and you get that sound, and the sound is just amazing, and the and the night and the night racing is, is phenomenal. I mean, what are you guys thinking about this? Well, at least with the night racing, you don't you're not in broad daylight, and then 15 seconds later it turns into nightlight drive club because that's that's <laughs> unrealistic in my opinion. Yeah. But yeah, this game. This game is the truth. This game is beast. This game is beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's everything I ever wanted in a racing game. And, you know, Dan Greenwald, the, the person who made this game from Turn 10, he's really passionate about cars. I love yeah. the way he talks about them. You know, Turn 10 really nailed this game completely. They're here at the park. And yeah. I cannot wait to review this game. I swear to God. Well, well, you know what's really interesting, and I, and I know somebody else is about to jump in, but what I like most about some of the Microsoft first-party developers is you got Dan Greenewald, who is really, really amazing uh, and passionate about uh, you know cars and that, and you have Rod Ferguson, really, really passionate about gears. You know, what I mean, you got people that actually love these franchises taking care of them. When you look at Halo, you know, and you got uh, Frank O'Connor, and you got those guys. Those guys are really passionate about that brand, and I think that's what you need. You want guys that are passionate about their particular craft and the brand, when you're, and uh, I think that's what you get. My bad. Yeah, I was going to say, when you're passionate about something and you're making this game, you know the end product is going to be on point. You see what I'm saying? The game is going to be great. And I always see documentary with every uh, Forza game, with every Gears of War game, yeah, Halo, Halo game. You know, they always have a little DVD with a collector's edition, like with Gran Turismo, I never see any documentaries. Probably because they don't speak English, but <laughs> hey, that's a whole that's a whole different story, man. It's just the it's passion just horrible ain't there. The, community the passion, not there. The passion well, ain't it, there, man. There's actually video of this, and, and correct me if I'm not wrong. I watched it, but my God, it was a while ago now. I believe uh, Xbox put out a video uh, called the Sprint, if it wasn't, uh, if I'm oh. right, on 343. Yeah. And basically, there was an article that came out two days ago that tied in with it that said Microsoft uh, developers at 343 are not just testing the game. They're playing the game. Yeah. And, and it's not just because they have to test it. They want to play the game. And that's the same thing you're talking about with Dan with Turn 10. When you watch him give a speech about his game, he's not talking like wow. every other developer we see on stage. He's he's talking like he's not even looking at the prompter. He's like, we then went to this uh, uh, speedway. We grabbed the essence of every single turn. We measured it. We came back. We revved. We had microphones that are the same ones that are in symphony orchestras hanging over each engine. And as we revved the engines, that's how we gathered the data from each of these sounds of the different vehicles. And this is just stuff that you look at when you're a regular... I work in engineering. When you work with different types of programmers, there are great programmers out there. But there's also great programmers that have a passion. And the passion is what puts in the fine details. And that's what you see in what I saw in that five-minute clip of 343's work on Halo 5. My God, I have to give him the whole credit there. That was yeah. mwah. Yeah, that shit yeah. was beautiful. 
crisp 60 frames per second. That is how we've never experienced a Halo game. We've yeah. never experienced anything like that. That was our I caramba. And it was. It was. <laughs> you know, and, and, and yeah, but you that's, got, that, that's the difference. That's the yeah, quality. That's the difference between the exclusives. Because look at Quantum Break. They have high pay Hollywood oh actors God. in it. It looks amazing. No PlayStation game so far has that kind of production value. And it's sad. It's like Sony talk about they for the gamer, they for the gamer, but they all smoke and mirrors. They don't put their time and their passion and their love into the games. Well, yeah, did you see the guy who came on see the guy who came on stage at um two E three ago when he was or was it no, excuse me, it was the twenty thirteen E three when he came on stage for Sony and he's like, This is Drive Club. Go back and watch it tonight, anyone who's listening to the show. He's like, Here it is. Fifty cars, fifty uh what is it there? Like twelve uh twelve speedways, uh this and that. And then he was like, Let's show a clip. I mean, like I could have done that, man. I mean, yeah. that was no, there was, was no bad. heart. Then Dan gets up there. You know, I guarantee you, if someone did a behind the scenes and interviewed him, he was probably like, "Dude, I had to actually cut out about a good thirty minutes or twenty minutes of what I wanted to talk about because it, it, he, he probably wanted to go on and on and on forever He's about talking. it." See, so the passion bad. Dan has with his game is is completely like on a whole different level. It separates him from the rest. Yeah. Well, and according to Tim Dog at E3, that Dan Greenwald has the crazy eyes. Yeah, <laughs> like, he'll, he'll give you like the the million yard stare, dude, and, and it's and it's pretty intense. And it's 1080p. Uh, yeah, oh, it's 1080p, 60 frames per second, and apparently it's it's locked at 60 frames per second. I think that uh, it's gorgeous what they're doing, and they really. Um, I'm not gonna say Forza Five wasn't bad. It just didn't lack. It didn't have the content that the other Forzas had. Yeah, uh, and that's understandable because if you look at it, Forza Four. Brilliant game, a ton of content, but they had to rebuild everything from the ground up on a right. new engine. Yeah, so Forza 5, you know, it had some microtransactions, which they don't have that anymore. Uh, it lacked content, but they did steadily add to it, but you didn't hear people hype it up the way they do Drive Club. I still hear every time Drive Club gets a new track or a new sprint car or something, everybody and their mother is like, oh, my God, Drive Club. It's getting new this and that, but, you know, Forza 5 has been steady getting content for two years, and <laughs> nobody's really said anything. That's yeah. almost a completely different game now than when it launched. And, uh, you know, and the Forza 6, just 460 cars. Uh, it's got it's, it's just got an amazing amount of content. Yeah. I'm like, I'm loving it. It's just I like the fantastic. mods. You know, the mods are pretty Yeah, cool. the mods. That's a brand new thing. I was like, holy crap. You know, you can, like, with the boost, and you can even put, like, like these dare mods on that, like, slow you down or That's do sick. different things. There's, yeah, like, an it's, RPG it's, it's, element to it. Yeah, it's it's really sick. It, it's amazing. And then, you know, with like I said, with the weather and the night racing, and there's, you know, different types of racing. And to, to people that would complain about dynamic thing, that's just people bitching yeah. about something. Because, look, yeah. these races, they only, they're only five, seven laps, right? So how the hell, what, are you going to start it in the morning, and then by the time you get to that seven lap, four minutes later, it's going to be <laughs> yeah. night or snowing? Like Come on, get That's out exactly what I'm trying to say. It's, that's not realistic. Yeah. <laughs> that's not like realistic. Just... Yeah, just because you say, okay, well, this is dynamic or whatever, I think that's completely ridiculous. You know what I mean? Like, that doesn't make something, like, all of a sudden better because the Drive Club, I'll tell you what, that doesn't ha – it's it's the same way. Every map, you know, you pick it, it's the same thing. You know what I mean? It's like if there was a slightly dynamic atmosphere in Forza Horizon 2, but you didn't hear people like, oh, my God, just raving about it. You know what I mean? It was good. And I think that it's amazing. I took a picture today of the three Forza games on Xbox One. As Xbox owners, we expect our AAA racers every year. We expect our Halos. We expect our Gears. That's what we like. They like the Sony fans like to make fun of us, like, oh, you just get this, this, and this. But I'll tell you this much. I'll take this, this, and this over Gosh. No Man's Sky, uh, whatever the hell else. <laughs> tear away. You know, tear away, yeah, unfold. Or all. Yeah. yeah, you know what? I'll take, I'll take those AAA exclusives and maybe even quadruple A because I'm telling you, Halo 5, Looks like the first quadruple A game I've ever yeah. seen. That game uh, is amazing. And, and just look at the talent they got in there. They got Nathan Fillion in there, who's like back as Bucky. He's one of my favorite Bottle characters. Fly. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. That that's what I'm talking about, Blazing Phoenix. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Buffy. You know what I mean? He was he was one of my favorite characters, and that was one of my favorite shows as well. So I'm like real happy about that. And they've got you know, it looks like they're going all out with this, and they're that's using amazing. They're using yeah, that, that Mike Coulter, who's going to be Luke Cage for Marvel, and this guy, you know, he's an amazing actor. 
That's yeah, what yeah. I'm saying. They they always hire Hollywood actors for their yeah. games. Like yeah. you never see Sony do anything like that. You yeah. know, especially for their AAA exclusives. No, they, 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 they the, that's the same asshole, Nolan North. With a, with a, <laughs> <laughs> He's really something, man. You those guys are so arrogant. Because the only people who ever have uh, that Nolan North and that Troy Baker on are IGN, because naturally this, that's the Sony, you know, television network. Yeah. And Troy you know, Baker literally, and they have North. both those guys. They dress up like homeless men with their heads in like they have those hair nets. Like and uh, yeah, the eighties look. Yeah, like they're the part of Twenty One Jump Street. <laughs> there, and they're like, no, they got their, they're drinking this latte, and they're like, they just, they, their noses in the air during the entire interview all the time. And because listen, they're on speed dial for Sony. They're the only two guys in The Last of Us, Uncharted. That's basically the only game Sony's had in the past four years. And in those two <laughs> games, that they're the two guys that are starring and co-starring. It's yeah. just, it's, an, it's, it's a circle. It has to pay down. It's unbelievable. Um, yeah, but yeah. That, well, well, that what it's incredible. Did you guys hear, like, okay, like, Halo 5, 1080p dynamic, 60 frames per second, and they're using cloud computing for different aspects of the game. Um, like, for me, consoles are closed box. So dynamic resolution, and I said this before, makes the most sense for console games. Yeah. When there's a yeah. lot of stuff going on in the screen, why forfeit your frames for resolution? Yeah. yeah. You want that fr- you want that good gameplay because you literally cannot tell your P and a ten eighty P. I don't care who the hell you are. So I think this is a brilliant move. And I said that this was like a few this is something that everybody should be doing. You know, Sony kind of forces that ten eighty P or death on you, you know what I mean? Yep. And I th- and I think that that's a little bit unfortunate. Uh, you know what I mean? But what do you guys think about the whole like dynamic resolution? I mean, do you think that's good enough? Do you think the media is gonna kind of attack this? What do you guys think? Well, Here's I mean, my- well sorry, go ahead. Go, no, no, go ahead, Wolf. No, all I gotta say about that is that look, as long as it keeps a consistent 60 frames, it makes sense right. to have a dy- dynamic scaling. And obviously, if this was a Direct X12 game, it probably would have been like 1080p 60 frames per second. You see what yes. I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. So yes, what's absolutely. more important is the frame rate. But what are you gonna say, Mooch, man? And no, I, well, actually, you just said it, and let me just—I'll capitalize on that. I'll, I want to add that what he just said bonifies that Wolf is a true gamer, because anybody who's gonna go ahead and tell <laughs> you. That a pigment of sand that is in 900p on the ground, and not when there's a massive explosion going on on screen, they're looking down to see if that sand is in 1080p, and that his frame rate could dip down to 45 fps. That, my friend, is somebody who's just full of shit. So what he's saying is accurate. I, when I play a game, you know what I want? Silk. I want my frame rate smooth. I don't want jittery jumps. Doing this. That. If I exactly. If oh, I am or the the screen. I'm sorry. Am I roboting? <laughs> now I said, no, I don't you do the oh, you say that robot on this show, we're always like, who, me? Wait. <laughs> yeah. No, no, you're good. Literally, my whole point is that like you have to have that 60 frames. When I watched that five-minute segment that 343 uh, released to us the other day, yeah, the, I yellow. wasn't even paying attention. to. The, it, it, that's why it was so great. I, I got to watch it like four or five times because I got to enjoy different aspects of it each time. But the first two times, I just watched the screen shift. When he jumped, that thrust forward, when he broke through that wall, and I saw smooth, I saw the elements break off the wall and everything in one smooth. There was no like the, you know, it's not like now, even The Witcher 3, when you use that one power and you breeze through the wall, it freezes a little bit and the blocks kind of scatter all over. Look, (laughs) does it bother me? No, but when, when a game actually shows you up and shows you how it should be done, now you're talking about setting a new standard. So I want to just say that what Wolf said is 100% right. When you're a gamer, you're going to talk games and you want to get on a level with all of us, don't start with that bullshit that every once in a blue moon when there's 50,000 fireworks going off on screen, it's 900p for a few seconds. Who gives a yeah. shit? Yeah, this 10AP thing is blown out of proportion. Like, I don't it's care. Like, as long as the game is fun, I'll play it. I don't care about the 10AP. Well, the developers, I was going to say, the developers always said, like, with dynamic scaling, with any kind of game, you could pack more graphics into the game, more detail, more yeah. physics, more lighting. You saw the lighting with that whole gameplay, uh, yeah. with the like sort of... Call the, you know the swords of uh, Shanghelius gameplay. Gameplay. You saw the water physics. You saw everything from the moment he jumped out of the ship. Yeah, it's just amazing, man. Uh, wow. Yeah. You know what? I, I like that, and I like that. What was it? Call of Duty has done that in the past. The dynamic scaling, and it's worked to the benefit of Xbox One owners. Um, like you said, Witcher Three is doing that as well. I think that Halo doing that and other games doing it as well, I think I have no problem with that. It's yeah. a closed box. So unlike with PC, where you the first thing they do, even though they don't admit it, is turn down the resolution to get those better <laughs> frames. You know what I mean? And we, we all know that's what they do. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, so, so we don't have that option. So I think that developers should 
be doing this so that we get the best experience because there's nothing worse than playing a game and then have it drop frames like crazy. You know what I mean? Because you've got a bunch of stuff going on, on the screen that these closed boxes can't handle. You know, and supposedly this game is like the biggest Halo ever. You know, it's got like the it, and I'm talking about the size of the world, the campaign. You know, you, you yeah, you've always got your squad with you. You know, and when you play online, like that new Warzone mode looks fantastic, and they're using like the cloud for different physics and and uh, AI and all that kind of stuff, and and obviously the servers. And I think that it sounds fantastic, and I'm really excited for it. I think that it's going to be the biggest exclusive of the year. And it's my most anticipated game. I mean, there's a lot of games coming out, and yeah, I'm having fun with all this stuff. Show. But yeah, I mean, this, that's this game is supposed to be between 16 and 18 hours long. And my yeah, only thing is, is why aren't the media talking about this? This is supposed to be a huge deal. <laughs> they gonna hey, give why, why, why aren't they talking about no DLC? You get free maps for life. All yeah, the map yeah. packs are free. I've never heard that really being done for a game like this. No. That'd be like Call of Duty coming out and saying. Free map packs. I mean, who? How? How much of a topic would that be? And people want to talk about the media being biased. Yeah. Say Activision goes, Black Ops Three is going to have three pat map packs, and guess what? They're going to be completely free. free. News would that be on every goddamn site? And we get not a freaking peep. Yeah, it was a little blurb when it came out, right? But we're not hearing anything as far as hey, that's a great deal. What? What a great thing by them. Because guess what? Halo 4, the only part that they really messed up as far as the online, as far as I'm concerned, was they segregated the audience. You couldn't yeah. play certain things. Like, I loved, like, the, the just a regular Team Slayer 4v4, but you couldn't really play it because you needed the map packs. You, you need all the so, map packs. Yeah, so even if I had map packs and my friends didn't, I was screwed. You couldn't play. So that killed off the online really fast. So what did they do? They're like, hey... Let's give them free maps. And what's it launching with, like, 15, 18 maps or something? It's, like, yeah. incredible content. Everybody's going to get the beta, I mean, right? Right? The beta was Oh, yeah. Oh, my yeah. God, yeah. I'm not buying Call yeah. of Duty this year. I'm being Halo. Yo, call, well, yeah, yeah, I, well, I'm, I'm, I'm probably... Go ahead. I, I was just going to say, I, I like the beta for Call of Duty. I'm still kind of in the air, talk, you know, whether or not yeah, I'm going to buy that. Here's the thing with Call of Duty, crap, and don't let me alter your opinion, but let me try to alter. <laughs> uh, let me tell you, no matter what, I'm not going to take nothing away from the game, okay? I've heard from a lot of people the game was uh, well well done. It's, it was executed good. No issues, really. Um, but when I asked them, I said, so what's different? A couple of people said, well, they're trying to pull off a Titanfall thing, but it still felt clunky and choppy. Yeah. I said, okay. I'm like, but in the essence of the game, what's changed? They're like, nothing. It's Call of Duty. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, well, then why am I – listen, i am only got so much time to devote to a certain game. War – what is it? Uh, what is it? War – Um, not Warfighter. What is it? Warframe? What are they calling um, that 12v12 on Halo? Uh, Warzone, yeah. Warzone. Warzone looks to be – honestly, I think I'm going to play Warzone, and I, I don't know if I'll ever leave it. Like, yeah. it, what I love about Titanfall – but what Titanfall doesn't have is the character development and the actual, like, uh, the, the, the vehicles and the story. What Halo does have, and now they're going to put the, the, the essence of the grunts and the cloud computing for the other, you know, so it's PvP and PvE. That's what yeah. really changes the game for me. And I, I can't see not playing that to death, besides playing the campaign over and over and over again. Yeah, it's, it's super frantic. I've seen some videos on YouTube, and it's, like, really frantic and, like... Hey, uh. Yeah, it's right, and that's what I like about it. You can like you you get your requisitions and things like that, and then you can upgrade. You get tanks or or whatever, you know what I mean? And just I think that we've never seen Halo maps this size before. You got like you said, twelve v twelve, but there's also bosses. There's minions yeah, running around. There's a yeah, there's a lot of stuff going around, and I think that that's really bringing change to some of the Halo. Look, you can sit there and cater to the old guard Halo fans. But go back and play Halo 1 or 2, and it's slow. Like, I love those games. But those games do not hold up well as far as, like, the gameplay and the slow and the slowness of, uh, you know, of the uh, of how it is. You can't run. You can't yeah. sprint. It's, like, so yeah. slow. It's, like, takes forever. Like in mud. Yeah, exactly. Wow, yeah. Games have to evolve. And if that means you have to have unlimited sprint, so be it. Look, Halo Reach had sprint, you know what I mean, as an ability, but... That's where it started off. Then we had Halo 4. That's the right. West Spring. I love Why Halo are people 4. complaining about Halo 5? The only people I see complaining about Halo 5 are the Sony fans. Yeah. They don't even have an Xbox One. They like Killzone. Yeah, well, they're the same ones complaining that Forza sucks and it's milk, but then they're bragging about 
Drive Club DLC or whatever, you know what I mean? So, I mean, I never saw so much damage control. Okay, when Halo 5 comes out, are they going to still talk about Killzone Shadowfall? I mean, that's, that's how ridiculous right, that, that is. Yeah, I mean, that, that's how ridiculous that is to me. I mean, I think it's utterly ridiculous and completely asinine to, uh, you know, they're, like, so insecure with that that they've got to go, oh, well, well, Drive Club. Well, guess what? I mean, uh, Drive Club, uh, we'll see, you're my, never going to see it. My You're never going to see another drive crap. club. My favorite then, argument is the Sony guys that keep saying, uh, "Well, I can't wait for Horizon to come out." I go, "Well, tell me what Horizon." <laughs> I go, "Tell me what, what's Horizon about? Tell me what it is." And they're like, "Well, I don't. I, there's dinosaurs in it." I'm like, "What it's the kill fuck? Zone come on, dinosaurs. man! It is. It's Killzone. Oh, Killzone dinosaurs! Kill Holy yeah, shit! Yeah, those hellgas dinosaurs. That's the way it was. It, it was hellgas dinosaurs. <laughs> it's Killzone dinosaurs. dinosaurs. Well, it was, exactly. And not only that, but guess what they said? This is what this is what Gorilla Games said. They said. We're not going to share a lot of details on the game or the story or anything like that before launch because we don't want to ruin the story or ruin the game. We feel that too many developers ruin the stories ahead of time, so we're going to keep tight-lipped about what we tell people. I mean, can you believe that? Look, they're not known for their storytelling elements, yeah, right? Horrible. Killzone's horrible. I don't know what's Yeah, Killzone on. has one of the worst with the most generic characters I've ever seen. Like, I can't even... I don't even remember a single character name other than Rico in one of them. Rico. Yeah. That's one of the only yeah. ones that I remember. And, Everybody on his panel, like, answer this question. Do you consider Killzone as an epic showpiece? Oh, my God. Yes no. No. It's no. a horrible game. <laughs> no. I, think, I think it looks good. I think it looks good, but... I think that especially the first couple of them or first few of them, they uh, well, they're just really kind of gray and uh, they're linear. They're linear to the end. Yeah. They're more linear than the Wolfenstein game we played in this generation. They're, they're just so linear down the one path. Uh, God forbid you go a little. If you move anywhere left or right where you're not supposed to walk, you're immediately killed by AI. And it's just <laughs> it, was, it was boring. I, I was playing it and I said to my buddy who was a PlayStation guy, I go, why? I go, why do you like that? He goes, you don't think it looks good? I'm like, it goes beyond that. Doesn't Boring. everything go beyond that? Like, who reads a book only because the cover is really, really it's great funny. looking? Hey, you know, hey, I, that, I don't understand this shit. I love it when we get the moochisms. Like, like, hey, there, yeah, I mean, you get a, you know I mean? you get a waitress and she really sucks. Oh, you get a tipper? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh, man. You know how you know Killzone sucks? You never seen Killzone tournaments. I've never seen Killzone tournaments. I've never seen Killzone at eSport. I never seen Killzone novels or short stories or movies. Like Halo destroys Killzone in every way. The story, well, the gameplay, everything. Killzone was the quote unquote Halo killer, remember? Oh, and Drive Club oh, was the yeah. Forza killer. <laughs> and then the Order eighteen eighty six was the Gears killer. Mad I mean, hate. to me, yeah, look, I mean, you can sit there and brag about the PS4 all you want, but it it doesn't kill anything on the on the Xbox. Well, it's actually kind well, of kind of humorous to me. Most importantly, we have not seen a custom console for Killzone or even a controller. Well, they exclusive because they know that this console sucks. I mean, like the game also <laughs> sucks too. <laughs> they know they exclusive yeah. suck because Sony has not one exclusive console. Well, like, aren't, they, aren't they doing? The, they're doing the Uncharted bundle. Did you see that? They're doing their new commercial is like. Uh, you know, uh, the best place to play this holiday, and it's like all these games you can play on Xbox except for the <laughs> Uncharted Collection, which is like no you can play that. Player. Yeah, you can play that on PS3 or PlayStation Now. Well, listen, Sony is totally catering to the idiots, okay? Because like nobody, the thing is, the the, the general public doesn't know that Assassin's Creed is not theirs. It doesn't know they didn't know that Batman wasn't going to come to Xbox One. They have no idea, so. Sony's just taking these main brands and they're just plugging it in under their name, which they can when they have the marketing rights. And the average Joe who's just walking by, he's like, oh shit, I want that. That's what I wanted. And they see it on the Sony poster and they look over at the Xbox when they don't see it and they're like, oh, then I must have to buy it for this. And of course, the guy at GameStop, he's not going to be like, well, you, you could get this for the other system if you're an Xbox guy. Well, no, I, they don't say anything like that. They're just very happy to ring you out. They either don't say anything or they lean you towards Sony. It's a lose-lose for Microsoft. Yeah. In I the brick and mortar. This, and this, this is probably the worst console I've ever had. It's like it's boring and it sits there. The interface is absolutely dreadful. Like I'll be sitting on there, you feel lonely. Like I gave myself a <laughs> test. It's a lonely station. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's isolated. Like I gave myself a test. I try not to use my Xbox for a week and just use PlayStation. I couldn't last 30 minutes. It was horrible. I kept saying PlayStation go to Netflix and I kept trying to do stuff and I forgot I was like, oh I'm on PlayStation. <laughs> yeah, I was doing the same thing. Like whenever I use a console that's not Xbox, I'm always like, "Go to this," or you know what I mean, and, and it doesn't work. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like, yeah, Xbox to me is like 
the the console that's that's actually more next gen. Like the PS4 the is realistically, console. yeah, the PS4 is like they they wanted just better graphics, and they were like, hey, let's give people better graphics, and that's it. We're not going to give them any kind of better features or anything like that. Well, <laughs> you know, before we change subjects, I want to harp on this for a second. I, I continuously hear a lot of YouTubers say this, and definitely the media says it. And I just want to correct people. We have to stop saying. After a sentence, somebody will go, oh, yeah, I saw um, Assassin's Creed Unity on the Xbox, and I saw it on the PlayStation 4, and, you know, you got to give it to Sony. There's, their, their, their system is a little bit more powerful. Well, stop, <laughs> stop right there. Their, their system is not more powerful, and someone will go, that's bullshit, Mooch. You're full of shit. It is. It's got a GDDR5, and Xbox doesn't have that. They have the DDR3. Um, I go, now, hold on a minute, okay? I said, you're talking about one particular item in the box that has a on-paper... Um, advantage. I said, but there's two things, and let's let's quote Albert Pinello. He said, when you're looking at race cars, he goes, there's some muscle cars that have 600 horsepower, and if you're talking about going straight straight down a course, that car is going to beat out the fine-tuned, let's say, German car. Okay. Uh -huh. He goes, but the minute you add a slight curve in the track, three. well, he goes, now everything kind of goes haywire, right? He goes, because that 600 horsepower beast. The minute it turns, it's going to slide right out and fall off the track where the other car is now going to just hug that turn. And he goes, it's about fine-tuning and precision. So before anybody on YouTube or a media uh, bias channel says anything, it, you can't just claim anymore. Now that we've seen cloud computing is real and we see what's going on with Microsoft yeah. and we see that Windows 10 is coming onto the system, you can't just say anymore to me because of one chip. Because of yeah. one singular chip, that, that console is stronger. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not. An off, it's an off-the-shelf product. That's it what is. It's, yeah. it's, it's like you, family you, dollar console. you bought your batteries off a shelf, right, and that, that makes yours better. It's, it's not that simple anymore. And anybody who thinks it's that simple, then you're a simpleton. You're an absolute idiot. You can't say that. And I know I can't wait to see the clips that are made for me from this one. But, like, literally. <laughs> <you know, laughs> Exposed! 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 You know, it's just so funny because, like, there's just so much more to a console than just one chip. So, I mean, you know, have at it. You want to, but, like, there's literally all of the fine tuning and the precision that's going. The AMD contract that Microsoft has with them for their GPU, like like Next Gen has said a million times, is, is still under wraps. Nobody really knows. And now Microsoft's actually in talks of purchasing AMD. Yeah, you, don't so. think that these, you don't think these two have been somewhat working together, that they have one hell of a fucking chip in that box that can do more than just the graphical figures that people have on paper that are on the back of the box? You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's well, just that's that's the part that so we we've got to whenever you know and the reason I bring it up crap is you're very big on YouTube. I think Wolf's got a great presence on YouTube, and so does Blaze. And, and I think if you ever talk to anybody that's especially in the Xbox community, stop them in their tracks when they say the Sony PlayStation Four is more powerful. There's a lot more to it than one chip. The box is made up of a lot more components. I never so, believed that. It's not. You know, it's not. First well, one, well, where's the I proof? Can, I'm going to go on record and say the Xbox One is a more powerful console than a PS4. And I that is without that. the cloud. That is without the cloud. I'll tell I you why. That. Look at Quantum Because break. it has a more powerful CPU, right? The GPU is custom. It's near enough the same. And plus, it has a be better memory buffer. Do you know what I'm saying? The mm. eSRAM with the DDR3 actually has, what? The speeds of it is much more faster than DDR5. Yeah, exactly. It's 200 and 4 gigabytes per second, while the PS4's GDR5 is 176. That's a fact. And then you got DirectX 12 on top of that. Yeah. So anyone wants to try to beg to differ, you could go ahead. You could even make a video about me. And, yeah, I did say the cloud is more powerful than four titans because that's a fact. <laughs> it's a fact. It's not an opinion. Look, why four would titans. Microsoft spend billion, billions and billions on this whole cloud infrastructure and then you just got four titans that's worth four grand. You're telling me four titans that's worth four grand is more powerful than a supercomputer. It does not make no sense, yo. Yeah. Well, well, not only that, Wolf, but check this out. Uh, you know, they, they're underestimating when they say 20 times the power. So, yeah. and they're also saying that that with, like, what Crackdown's doing, that they're saying that's doing stuff that a $20,000 PC can't do. That's crazy. So, I mean, that should, I mean, I'm not real technical on the PC stuff and Titans and all this, but that, to me, that these developers are saying, hey, this thing with the cloud is doing things that our twenty thirty $30,000 high-end super PCs can't do, uh, you know, 
Yeah, well, look that's at, what look I'm at saying. the capabilities. Look at the capabilities of what we're all talking about right here. There's not one Sony uh, podcast that they're talking about anything that's coming in the future. No technology that's coming. The X12, yeah, the X, the greatness continues to await. <laughs> they're not talking about games. They're not talking about. They can't run the X12 on it. So I mean, like they just there's a, there's nothing really coming to this PlayStation. So what do they do? They attack us. This is what you do. You attack. Yeah, like, why don't you attack. tell your fans what's coming on your console? And if you don't have anything, maybe you should advise your fans to go buy an Xbox One or tell Sony what you guys want. That's what we do. That's why preview members get the feedback, which Sony's yeah. trying to do, but they don't care. They're laughing at your comments. They're like, ha, 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 Sony, we're Japanese. Sony, I don't blame them because if you, Sony fans are very stupid. Sony can do anything. <laughs> like, Sony could come out tomorrow and announce that the PS4 is going to be $500 starting tomorrow, and they would still wouldn't care. So if I was Sony, I would take advantage of them. Who wouldn't? They, yeah. They don't say yeah, bravo, yeah, bravo to hey, them for that. Hey, yeah. hey Blazing, I, I said the same thing. Look, and me and Mooch did a video the other day saying, hey, as long as they're going to keep suckering people and people are going to buy it, why would they change and waste more money when they're making all this money, right? That's Look, smart. The, the, yeah, that, that's smart. If they're sitting there and selling people on indies, multi platform games with some timed exclusive uh, content, uh, you know what I mean? These, these little cheap looking double A games. PlayStation Vita ports, are you kidding me? PlayStation Vita ports. Imagine if that, Xbox did that. Like, if they took some game from Windows tablet and made it an Xbox One exclusive. Yeah, exactly. Dude, you're exactly right, Phoenix. Look, that's like Microsoft taking, uh, what the hell is a, like an iOS game? To me, that, <laughs> that's what... <laughs> Yeah, look, Tearaway, Tearaway, right? That game flopped big as hell. It flopped on the Vita. It flopped on the PS4. Yep. Gravity Rush, that thing flopped. Why are they porting handheld games to a console and you guys are just like, oh, Ali Dog, we got Gravity Rush. We've got <laughs> this. You know what I mean? To me, that's not anything to be happy about. You know what I mean? Yeah. Look at, I'm telling you, happiness is stuff like, okay, look, we get Quantum Break. Recore, Killer Instinct Season uh, Three, Forza Horizon Three. Uh, you know what I'm saying? We've get we're getting Gears of War Four, Scalebound, Halo Wars Two. Crackdown. That's Crackdown. Those Recore. are yeah, Recore. Those are games to be excited about. Big games, new IP that are triple A caliber. Not these little terrible little indies that are coming from or PS Vita ports. Look, the PS Vita is not even that old. I have one. It's a nice handheld, but it has no support. But the funny thing is, the support that it does have is the basically the exact same stuff that they're putting on the PS4. But you guys are too stupid to realize it, and that's kind of sad to me. I mean, you guys all act like you're too like. How can you not see what Sony's doing? This isn't the Sony they, of what they ten got, years though. ago. Yeah, you know what I'm saying what have they got. They got Vision Net trash. I am bread trash, <laughs> you know what I mean? Fat Princess trash, No Man's Sky yeah, trash. They got Fever what, what have they got? What, Journey? Come they on. They got Buyer's Remorse, guys. They got a good case of Buyer's Remorse. <laughs> they got oh, Blackie, Blackie, Blackie Lebowski. Yeah. Blackie, what's up? No, sorry about that. I was out for dinner. Uh, my friend, my girlfriend's uh, friends were in from Michigan, so we had to eat some dinner. I would have texted to let you know, crap. Sorry for jumping in so late. No, dude, I left the link. I told everybody. I was like, you'll be in here, hopefully. Uh, you know what I mean? No big deal. Cause, uh, but, dude, since you're a little bit late, what, uh, you have Forza 6, right? Yes, sir. What do, what do you think about that, man? Tell, tell us a little bit about it because we were talking about it, man. I was saying it was amazing, man. I just I can't stop playing it. Uh, I'll say this. It's, it kind of fits in the category along with all the other games and franchises that Microsoft, uh, they hold. They, they take a lot of care. They put a lot of effort. They put a lot of... Uh, money into these franchises, and Forza is just another clear-cut example of it. You can't deny it. You can't say anything else to make me think differently. I played all the racing games, the big ones up to this point. You have Mario Kart is the king of some fake shit, and when it comes to the real <laughs> simulator, Forza hands down is just it's one of those franchises and games that just it lets me know as a consumer I got the right system. I'm, I'm with the right people who are going to take care of me as far as games and content moving forward. Yeah. Yo, Blackie, Blackie you, you hit the nail in the coffin earlier on on Twitter when you said Forza 6 is like crack and cocaine in digital form. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> it's coffee. It really is. Like Once you get through the tutorials and you get into the menu, and it, it all opens up. It's like you have the customization, you have the multiplayer, you have the cloud features, you have the damage, you have the cars, the amount of cars, you have the detail within the cockpits of each of those cars. You have the – I mean, whenever I was driving through a puddle 
and my right tire got in the puddle, it pulled me in. Like, that's what really happens. Like, the yeah. physics, the sound, it's, like I said, they're doing this with all of their games, and Forza is just another example of how uh, Xbox and Microsoft, they really care about their franchises. And the biggest thing about Forza is Halo is just damn near a month away. Now, what happens yeah. when this shit is out? You have Forza, you have Gears, you have the new UI, you have the scuff controller. It's, I don't see nothing touching the Xbox One. No fanboy shit. As a smart consumer, I just don't see it. And Forza is another piece of evidence that allows me to have that thought and be confident in that thought. Yeah, They're going to destroy the Black uh, for Christmas and Black Friday. Yeah. Do you guys think we'll see a sub? I, I'm thinking we're going to see a 250, 270 Xbox One around Black Friday. What do you guys think? Do you think the price will be that crap, or do you think that's with? I, I think it'll be that. It'll be that. It'll be that for that particular like Black Friday. I think what a game. Yeah, I, I think you're going to do Halo Five and Gears and probably even Forza yeah, together. Like they'll they'll yeah. do a they'll do a crazy bundle and everybody's going to go to the store and buy it and it'll probably be sold out. Yep, yeah, and that's for the know, 360 on this upgrade. Yes, yes. You know what? Like I said, we did the MPD stuff last week. There is no way that three Xbox 360 games should be in the top ten on 360. Right. Come on, man. You know what I mean? I mean, it was good to see Rare Replay and Gears Ultimate in there because I'm, you know, I love Gears and and Gears although the Nasher. Iron Wolf, you're a bit, you're in with them, man. The Nasher, you got to aim to the left. What's the deal with that? Like to me, <laughs> it's so weird. Like I was playing it with my buddy, and we were you know, doing that two v. They have they have that right hand advantage kind of thing, and I think they're gonna yeah. change that in gears. So you yeah. see with Tomb Raider and games like you know where you could switch the shoulder. I yeah, think they're gonna like do that with Gears yeah. of War Four. Yeah, and Metal Gear, they're gonna do that in Gears of War Four. Well, you could push yeah, they, and you switch the left right shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, it's interesting because I was playing the two v two stuff with my buddy, and we it's like a running joke because we're like, "Hey, you guys think you can shoot left better than us?" Because <laughs> we had to go into a private room and figure out what the deal was. I was like, "Holy crap! You have to aim the, to the left." The last shot yeah. on the left. Yeah, it's crazy, but I do. I, I still love that game, and the sixty frames per second is just absolutely phenomenal with that. I think like like a lot of people will just be like, "Oh, it's just a remake," but to me. That's a totally new online, so that's like a next gen online of gears. You know what I mean? I love it. I think it looked better than um, God of War three remastered. Oh, oh my gosh, that's not even a remake. You know what? I had someone get hounding me on Twitter the other day about, oh crap, you said that uh, the Nathan Drake collection was just simple ports, and but look at this, they that's they're claiming funny. that they totally redid the the cutscenes, and I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh, man, these Sony people, like they're so thick headed, they don't get it. It's like you, that you're, it's like arguing with a retard, and I'm not making fun of retards, but you know, retards don't grasp arguments, and neither do Sony phonies. You know what I mean? You sit like there and Charles tell them. Yeah, you just sit there and tell them something. It's like that's why they're like, oh, crap, you just block everybody. You block everybody. I'm like, you cannot argue with these people. I'm all for just having a conversation with these people, right, about gaming. That's fine. I have no problem. But these people will not admit anything. Oh, they won't admit anything. You, you can't even get them to admit that they have a bad lineup this holiday. How the hell – can you not admit that you have a terrible fucking lineup this holiday when you have no games? You well, have nothing. Yeah, crap, that's, not even that. That, that's one thing. The one like Jamie Moran just tweeted out. I, you get in the conversations on Twitter. The reason you block people, there's people actually arguing with us that Tearaway will beat Forza Six in sales. <laughs> oh my I mean, god! How do you argue with that? You have the president of. Uh, Sony. Oh, by the way, Tearaway oh. sold like shit in the UK. Just so I let you know. It's, that's going to sell like shit everywhere. Nobody's going to buy that. That should be like a digital ten dollar. Like game on PSN. The UK is smart. They know that trash. Like they know quality. <laughs> Sony fanboys will actually argue with like their own the people they worship. They'll say the AAA lineup is sparse this year. And, Hell no, there's no way it's sparse. It's like well, Andrew House just said that. He'll, there's no way he could have said that because I got this game over. <laughs> he didn't mean it like that. He didn't mean it that way. He was misquoted. He was he didn't really mean it was sparse. He was just he was just trying to try to set Microsoft up. You know, they come up with this weird shit in their heads, you know what I mean? Just like <laughs> with new definitions for sparse. They're like, Well sparse means kinda of plentiful on Mondays, right? <laughs> no, not, no, no plentiful in, in anywhere in here, dude. Like you have no games. Why well, you keep talking about persona four or five? I don't even know, man. I you know, I don't I'm not I'm not I'm not digging the purple the purple hair. And the tight jeans over yeah. on the PS4. You know, that's just not me, man. <laughs> yeah, well, well, you know, it's really interesting, right? Like, people are just like, wait for, like, I heard this, you know, Omazio or Omazio or whatever the hell his name is. Wait for E3, crap. There, Sony's going to have a bunch of games that are going to announce, and they're going to surprise you. They're going to have the surprise exclusives coming out this year. I guarantee it. Well, E3 came and went and nothing. 
TG or uh, you know, Gamescom came. Microsoft had all those great announcements. Everything really good. A great show. Sony had nothing. <laughs> then they're like, wait for TGS. Wait for TGS. TGS came and went. What do we get? You get more like these indie looking titles, Vita ports, uh, King of Fighters, HD remakes. All right, yeah, guys, let me, can, I, can I give you guys an example? This is what happened after TGS. This is on every gaming media website. I know you guys saw it on Twitter. Ready? Here's a quote. This is a quote of the headline. Naughty Dog might have just accidentally revealed The Last of Us 2. Now, Cole, oh, stop first the presence. We didn't know no, that. First of all, no shit. That fucking company makes two games. Okay? It makes The Last of Us, and it makes... What? Uncharted. And Uncharted's yeah. coming out next year. So what do you think's fucking coming out? They let that slip? <laughs> I mean, what the fuck is that? Hey, guys, just in case you didn't know, Disney's making another fucking Disney movie next year. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> but the point of the matter is that you've got fucking all – every publication is willing to – all right, guys, listen. I mean, this has to happen in a meeting, right? All right, TGS sucked. Sony didn't do anything. What can we do? Well, I heard Neil Druckmann said something about Last of Us 2. All right, run with it. <laughs> run Publicize with that. that shit yeah. now. From Let's run it. Hey, let me ask you this, though. Did anybody really think that wasn't going to happen? I mean, they released it. It Come got on. all those critical awards. I think they gave uh, they, already. Yeah, they, they, oh, dude, dude, you, you beat me to what I'm, to my point, Blaze and Phoenix, because look, they release it on in 2013 on PS3, then they re-release it less than a year later, then they standalone release the DLC, then they have all these goddamn microtransactions in that game for guns, kill animations. I mean, you want they they would charge you out the ass. How in the world did they get away with that? I still don't know that. Like any game, like. That has microtransactions that like that pay to win for a full price game. Get the fuck out of here. They was like the game of the year edition, right? On that game. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, got, they, they released the number one. Yeah. They sold the DLC as standalone. They did that with um, Infamous uh, First Light or something too, right? Yeah. They yeah. do that as standalone, and then you'll see the Sony fanboys put that in their little fucking list. <laughs> you can look just... at those lists. And I just see. think the game was boring. I just think the game was just boring personally. Yeah, and yeah, in case you know the YouTube police want to check out, my trophies are there on PSN, so I have to beat the game. Just while so I let you know. Yeah, you get one goddamn trophy for beating yeah, the I, game. I don't <laughs> think the game was like the first half of the game. Then you get boring. The, like, the game wasn't even rewarded. Stingy rewarded. with the trophies, man. Stingy yeah, with the trophies. Hey, hey that, yeah, we, 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 can prove, we, can, we got a little something going, Mooch. You actually played and liked the multiplayer on the PS3 I, I, version of the I'm not going to. I will, I will. You know, listen, you got to stand on your on your stack of Bibles, right? I did play. Uh, I beat I beat the game, and I thought it was all right. And the reason it was all right was, let's be honest, we're all wrapped up. In, anyone who's wrapped up in The Walking Dead kind of fell into that whole little yeah. I'll I'll buy into the story. So that was it is what it is. I did enjoy. I played a good. It was it was. Remember everybody. The the release of it was complete and utter dead time of all games. It was the summer before new consoles released. Yeah. And I played. I did play quite a bit of online um, activity. Now I had two or three of my friends that had PS3s, and we played. Uh, I I liked the way that it was slow. Uh, I like the way that it, it did work. You did work as a, a group of four, and it, the resources were limited. I kind of like that whole thing. But what I did, what I didn't like about it was if I didn't have my two or three friends that I could actually get into the group, which took forever because PSN is terrible. Um, <laughs> literally, I would have had no fun. Whenever I would just get on and play nights by myself, I left my headset off, and that's a game that really requires decent mm -hmm. strategy. And I left my headset off because there was nobody to talk to, or it was just awful. Um, First of all, it was just immediate vulgar and like childish racist things they said on there. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to be a part of that bullshit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's why I like the Xbox community, man. Listen, Blaze has been in there. Wolf, we've been on there. Kraft's been on there with me. Everyone that jumps in and out, some are YouTubers, some are uh, fans. They all jump in and out. Very respectful. Hey, guys, this and that. What's going on? What are you guys playing? Can we get in? Can we jam with you? Can we hang out? Just like you would do in a basketball court. You know what I mean? Like, if I saw a Blaze and I didn't know, i be like, you guys got room for two more in here? No. If they say no, am I going to yeah, start no. cursing people out and get vulgar? No. You fucking sit the fuck down. <laughs> wait your turn. Like, the Xbox community yeah. is just a little bit more – listen, there's, there's definitely a higher echelon. Uh, there's, never, you know, there's a higher echelon. There's, a, there's, a, there's more expendable uh, money flow in the Xbox community. That's why if you look at the yeah. 360 numbers, uh, it wasn't if just the sales. You of the got motorcycles and stuff. 
That's what I'm trying to say. You know, people have got expendable money, and, and we game for entertainment, not this bullshit. Yeah. We do these shows to kind of keep things equal, keep the equilibrium. Mm. Because yeah. right now the media and the PlayStation fanboys that have YouTube channels are so running rampant. If it's not for us that are on here, you've got absolutely nothing fighting for the for the green flag. You know what I mean? So literally we're out here doing this and that, but like literally the PSN network is terrible. The game was I, I gotta give credit to them on that. I wish we could get something that was a little bit more that four on four. I know uh Gears does it in Gears Ultimate, but Gears doesn't you don't need resources. Gears is still a very much yeah, you, you know wham bam, down. yeah, we're gonna hit this up, we're gonna kill people real fast, and then you, you respawn. It's it, it's it's more traditional. Uh but uh, at the same time I like that I what I like about Gears is I like that it's four on four uh, in, Ultimate Edition, and I like that it's slower paced. I don't know. There's, there's something to be said for that than just all of a sudden, like, all right, one, two, three, go. You know what it's I mean? It's more intimate. So, the, the thing I is. don't like about the Last of Us multiplayer is that they don't give you enough ammo, so you cannot really spray or anything like that, man. No, it's you like, can't. That's yeah. right. You and I hate that. I like this. I like to shoot my guns when I want to shoot them, and I don't want to be like, you know, limited. You know what I'm saying? And that's duly noted. I I agree with you know. Here's the thing. I I, I did like it. I did like it that it was sparse. In the uh, in the ammo, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, at the same time, I do respect and understand because there is a time when you just want to go guns blazing. You know what I mean? There's something to be said for that that you don't want to just sit there and pop people off one one bullet at a time. Um, so you know, depending on the type of player, I can see where you can go either way in that. The only that, but that's literally you go back 2012, 2013. The Last of Us multiplayer is the only thing I can even tell you I kind of enjoyed on that system. Yeah. You know, that's how sad that was. Uncharted 3 was not that good. It wasn't... I like the first one. The first and the second one are something to talk about. I like the second one, but yeah, I'll say the first one one was... eh. Well, well, here's the thing I didn't like about the first one, right? Like, they... uh, the damn six axis controller stuff, oh, right? Like, yeah, like you're you're crossing a log, right? And then you gotta like balance the controller. It was so terrible. You know yeah. what I mean? Like they did that shit in the Vita version, right? Because I picked up a Vita recently. They like they were having them on closeout at GameStop, right? They're getting rid of uh, all the the older bundles or whatever. You know the ones with Borderlands Two or whatever, right? Yeah. They were like ninety nine bucks. I bought one, right? Um, so you got I, a I got for ninety nine bucks. Yeah, I did. I mean that's a good deal. You guys would probably get one for that, right? I mean that's not that's you know, and listen, and... I'll be honest with you. There's look, there's a time I I've said this on many shows and you got to I got to keep reiterating it so people don't, you know, have a heart attack. I I'm going to eventually and don't get me wrong, Blazing, I feel bad that you you had to go out and get it ahead of time and it's been collecting dust. I mean, I believe that, you know, but you're a gamer, so you're going to use it eventually with maybe Uncharted 4 or something. But I, I will have, end up having a PS4 in the house just because... Buy it used. Oh, absolutely. I'm either, <laughs> buying, no, I'm, I'm either buying it used or they're doing or when they do an incentive. Because I have two PS3s in the house. I've got a bunch of older Xbox 360s. So whenever they're, like, doing one of those deals where they give you 100 bucks for each of them... and I They're can doing that right now. For, that's what I saw. I was just looking at that. Yeah. I, the woman like, I know, I, the GameStop people know me, you know, so I talk to them all the time. They're like, to be honest with you, bro, they're like, you can bring in all your systems. You can walk out of here with a PS4 for about 20 bucks. I'm like, listen, yeah. I'll be honest with you, that's tempting because I, that's about <laughs> all I would pay. Because <laughs> 20 bucks. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> like, if anybody listening and they on the fence about getting an Xbox One and get a PS4, listen to me and Ray. We got a PS4. We're yeah. hardcore Old school PlayStation fans. I love PS1. I love PS2. But the PS4 is a horrible console. You got to go with Xbox One. That's where the game's That's at. Right. That's where the features at. That's and right. that Lee controller looks amazing. I can't wait to have Lee yeah. controller. Oh hey, shit! I mean, I mean, Ray, Iron, Iron Wolf, you blazing and Blackie. I mean, you guys are all old school PlayStation gamers, right? I yeah. mean, you guys yeah. were. Yeah. I was an like, Xbox hater. hater. I hated Xbox. Like he was a. Uh, I mean, y'all might remember this game, but Parasite Eve, Resident Evil. Uh. Uh, Final Fantasy Seven, Twisted Metal, you had a so calm. People forgot all this shit. Like next to Ghetto, <laughs> Medieval, Soul Reaver, uh, yeah. Legend uh, of Dragoon. Game I played. Tw- I played Twisted Metal to my thumbs blood. I'm not even joking. Blackie, every time you say that in one of your videos, I'm like, yo, you're one of the only people who keeps bringing that up. I was like, I thought I was the only one that liked that shit. Oh, man. You know what? Metal I- was amazing, and it's it's yeah. like this. It's there's a lot of games that they're they're not. They're not here no more for PlayStation. Like, for example, I'm going to tell I'm going to say it just like this. Tomb Raider. Like, on the PlayStation 1, on the PS2, this game, I mean, it was available on the, on the PC because my mama, she bought a, a computer off QVC a long time ago when they were a couple thousand bucks. And we played Tomb Raider. And I remember 
It was just the shit. It was like that game that everybody was talking about. Metal Gear, the same thing. Parappa, the rapper. They had uh, something. And now that's that's gone. That shit gone. is gone. Uncharted, as good as that game looks, this is the fourth installment of the series, the next one coming up, like the major installment. And I'm done with that franchise. Yeah. I'm like, you need something else besides Uncharted because Microsoft is kicking your ass with Gears and Halo and all this other stuff. You know, like, there's no, There's no... Kick-ass games, man. Whenever I say Parasite Eve and Resident Evil and Rapid Rapper, everybody needs to be quiet because that's that's clear evidence that I was I was on that PlayStation at one point. See, that's why I like the PlayStation, the PS1, PS2. I like the diverse lineup of games. They had so many incredible games. And then, like, when it got to the PS3 and the PS4, it's like all of that stopped. It changed. And this console, like, we're not hating on it. We own the console. It's just a, it's not a good console. That's it. That's Blaze. That's, what that's you just it. said, that's no games. What, that should be in quotes underneath every single one of our shows. It's not that we hate on it. There's just nothing to play on it. The, the console sucks. The company sucks <laughs> right now. Keep yeah, it but more, more, yeah, there's one thing I wanted to add is that I bought a 360 before the PS3. Obviously, yeah. you know, the 360 came out Me before too. the PS3, but I, I owned one. I owned yep. one first. And, you know, when I found out that, you know, People are saying that, yo, they're going to get the next Resident Evil. Sony are going to get the next, you know, Devil May Cry. They're going to get the next Final Fantasy. And when I found out this came to Xbox, I thought, I wasted my money on this piece of shit. Yeah. yeah. Why the hell did I, why did I buy this shit? That's right. The only games I really played on that was Metal Gear and God of War 3. That was the only two games. Yeah, that's what I thought. When I first Uncharted 2. That was yeah. it, Uncharted 2. When I first saw the, the announced the PS3, I thought we were getting all our games. I thought we were going to have SOCOM, a, like a brand new ill SOCOM with amazing online. I thought we were just going to have all our PS2 games at HD. That's what I thought, and then I was lied. It was horrible. I know. Everything was horrible. Well, you got then. SOCOM, but you got SOCOM 4, and they shut down the servers oh, a year later. Man, those games was horrible. Yeah, and then yeah, you then had, had uh, Mag, Mag with it shut down the servers. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Gran Turismo 5, the servers don't exist either. Yeah. Well, the, you know what? Look, Sony got away with that, right? Like we all we realize that now, right? Like Sony completely got away with shutting down the servers for all the Resistance games online. They they even shut down last year's baseball game online, right? Like yeah. even on the PS4. How do you that's, shut down the baseball game a year later? I mean, that's just why, like why are the media calling them out on this shit? Well, so this I'm, I'm sick listen. and tired of this buy shit. That's, that's what I'm it, saying. What People think we're crazy. People think we're crazy when we say it. Right? They think, oh, they, they just got the tinfoil hats, it's this, it's that. Look at some of the facts. These are some of the facts. Microsoft gets in trouble. Look, how many people ran a story and, and used clickbait? Microsoft shutting down Xbox Live Indie. Yeah, yeah right? sure, like They didn't specify that it's the 360, yeah, that it's the 360 uh, indie thing because they're phasing out the 360 stuff as they should. That console is 10 years old. See, they said Xbox Live, meaning they try to say that is for the Xbox One too. So they're trying to mislead people thinking that shit. They're trying to make uh, people think that you know yeah. Microsoft are anti-indie when that's not the case. Yeah, they're the evil, greedy corporation. See, Phil Spencer has been really supportive with a lot of these indie developers, man. Always yeah. retweeting their stuff, you know, promoting their stuff, and you know, this is one thing that people don't realize. Yeah, but a lot of indie guys are annoying. Like, what's the fish guy? Remember him? Yeah, uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, and same thing with Jonathan Blow from the wit, yeah. the guy that's making the witness. I got an argument with that dude over cloud computing over Twitter, and they used it for a story. Because <laughs> this guy is a developer, but like, was like saying, uh, was saying that all oh, Microsoft was lying, that there's no such thing as cloud computing. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, you're a developer. This is your job to know this stuff. And you're telling me that you don't believe Microsoft, who is like the leaders of technology, that you know they got Azure, they got all this stuff, and you're gonna tell me that they can't do? And he's like, oh no, they're not using 300,000 <laughs> servers. They're using, uh, you know, one uh, this kind of server, and then it's just acting virtual servers and this. And I'm like, dude, I know what fucking virtual servers are. I'm not a retard. You know what I mean? I was like, I know what this is, and and this is Microsoft. This isn't some fly-by-night company. If they say we're going to use 300,000 servers, that's not even a lot of their servers. You know what I mean? they got a lot yeah. more than that. They're not poor like Sony. I think yeah. it boils down to like people being so young because if it all just makes sense. Like We're sitting here talking about the golden days of PlayStation. You, and like you know about Microsoft, and I think that a lot of people, you know, if you're you know 17 right now, 10 years ago, you were very young, and you couldn't really process this information. It wasn't even important to you then. So you, you get here now, and they're the ones clicking on these 
clickbait articles and letting Sony get away with this shit because they don't remember back in the day Siphon Filter and all the games we just Oh, my gosh, Siphon Filter, man. It's like, I think you have the youth, and it's a shame, but it's good that you have guys like us who are willing to speak up who've been around for 20-plus years doing this hobby to say, hey, this isn't, this is bullshit. And, you know, we talked about the 360 earlier and how people need to upgrade to the Xbox One, and I think that this is worth mentioning. It just shows just how strong the Xbox ecosystem is. Like, these people are eventually going to get that Xbox One. I mean, if you're having all these games still, you know, in the top as far as sales on these old systems, like, these people are eventually going to, you know, get get with the new stuff. But I think as far as all this other shit, man, it's just a bunch of young idiots. But yeah. I think after this, this fall, and I've said this a few times, with, with the new Halo and you at least have Gears and the big new Forza game. It's not a launch title. These 360 owners are going to start. They're going to start looking at that Xbox One. They're going to start getting it. Yeah, it's going to attract it. Now, Blackie made a good point talking about the youth because I feel like when I talk to Xbox gamers, they seem more knowledgeable about old school gaming and gaming in general. Sony fans just be saying some off the wall stuff. Like I think they just in it for like the arguments on Twitter and YouTube. Like they're not really in it for the gaming. Because if they were in it for the game and why they keep attacking good quality games like Scalebound and Crackdown, these games look amazing. You should judge a game by how good it looks, not just because it's an Xbox exclusive or it sucks. It's me and Ray, like we always say, if Sony have a good game, we'll tell the truth. We'll buy it. Well, even worse than that, Blazing, you have people who look at a game like Scalebound. Oh, it's 900p. They'll, they'll discredit <laughs> this shit. And it's like, hold on, hold on. Last generation, the PS3 was was the worst as far as the oh, platforms and all this shit. And, you know, nobody was really talking about that. It was it was something that was mentioned, but it was all about the AAAs, exclusive games at the end of the last generation. You know, that's where Sony was really starting to shine. It was like, hey, you know, Rare, why are you making Kinect games? You need more uh, 360 exclusives. And the tables have turned, you know, on both sides. Xbox is doing a lot of games, and Sony's doing a lot of other bullshit. And I'm not, it don't count this generation. For some reason, shit that was, you know, it's like these Sony fanboys and the fanboys in general. I don't consider anybody in this podcast to be a fucking fanboy. Boom! We I don't know your minds are blown out there. <laughs> Lebowski just said that. <laughs> it's, it's not that, man. I feel like we're all trying, we're aiming to be smart consumers, man. And at the end of the day, I can't ignore the Elite Controller and the fact that these franchises are taken care of and you have a bunch of young, ignorant fucks who are just <laughs> talking stupid shit. You talk about, you know, this. I like Halo, and they try to mention um, some $10 indie game, and, oh, that's that's right there with Halo because I have that goddamn buyer's remorse, and I'm going to tell you this shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like I said, the PS4 is what the PS3 should have been. Like, all the promises they did last generation they couldn't keep, that's what they're trying to do in this generation. You know, like with the 1080p 60 frames a second. And all it was 120 stuff. frames per second for the PS3, though, so yeah. you get I it right, it. Blazing Phoenix. 120 frames per second. Uh, the TVs weren't even invented yet to do that, so Sony is going to have to come out with some TVs. And by the <laughs> way, Rumble, that's so last generation. You guys want these little, like, two-ounce baby controllers that it's feel like horrible. you're nothing. Yeah, they, and, and we got done making fun of the Wii because it's it's using motion controls, but we're going to throw motion controls in our six-axis controller and be hypocrites and, again, make you buy this, and you're going to love it. Right? I mean, remember, that, <laughs> remember that six-axis thing? That was a bit of a gimmick. Then they just changed it to the DualShock 3. Yeah, it was horrible. They just continued that shit. It all, it, all had, it all had to... Uh, um, you know, it, it all had to, uh, to, to do with that, that lawsuit. They were getting sued over the Rumble, you know what I mean? I, it, it seems like they're just not an innovator. Like, if you look at the DualShock 3 to the DualShock 4, they added shit that they're probably going to take out in the DualShock 5. With the Xbox and Nintendo, <laughs> it's, it's, with the exception for the Wii U, they're always moving in an innovative direction and adding things yeah. to the controller that are going to be there forever. With the PlayStation, it's like the 6-axis. It was there, now it's not. The touchpad... It's there. It might not be there next time because there's not yeah. a lot of utilization. It's the stupid fucking light not that be drains there. the battery. That definitely might not be in the next one because what Listen, the fuck is it? They're doing? not 
Sony doesn't listen to their customer. Yeah, and I'll tell you how, Blackie. Let me give you an example. TGS came and went, and the only thing they offered in the form of a controller was now it comes in silver, gold, and who gives a shit? And I'll tell you right now. <laughs> why would you fucking – why would you take the time and effort in your research and development to some? you believe that? I mean, you, can you fathom going to work and somebody was like, we've got a big problem with the controller. The battery lasts three hours. We put a useless light, and we have a touchpad nobody uses. What can we do? And some little tiny guy who's probably five foot four in Japan raised his hand and he was like, <laughs> change the color. And he was like, yes, <laughs> that's it. That's it. We will fool the Americans. No. What the fuck is going on? Like, honestly, when I saw the new controller thing, I said, wait a minute, they might have done something. I'm like, they may have actually made, you know, put a bigger, uh, uh, what is it, lithium battery. They may have done something else, I, I, something that people want to get rid of the, the glow stick. No, they didn't do anything. They changed it from black to gray to gold to white. And I'm like, why wouldn't you listen to your consumer? Now, everything – you guys, how many – you guys got to laugh at this. How many videos did we see when Xbox One and PlayStation 4 were coming out that did a side-by-side -side analysis of everything? Everything. Yep, and everything. the one that everybody did the, the – no, tune in tomorrow for my controller review. And everybody did the two controllers next to each other on a pillow in their house. Real professional. But I, all right, so they did a controller uh, review, and they're like, well, let me tell you something, guys. Uh, they go through, and they're like, the Xbox feels good. Everything's right. It's just more, um, the rumble is amazing. I loved everything about it. Let's talk about the PS4, the DualShock 4. They pick it up, and they talk to you, and they're like, what an absolute amazing feat. It's better than the DualShock 3. <laughs> Everything was better than the DualShock 3. So was it? So th they ended each comparison saying, "Okay, I got to give the nod to PlayStation, PlayStation 4 because it beat the old DS3. The DS4 is better than the DS3." No you, shit. No shit. That wasn't what the fucking topic was. <laughs> yeah. But was it better than the Xbox One controller? The answer is no. It no. wasn't. And it never it will isn't, be. and it won't be exactly. But like, this is the part that like I scratch my head till I bleed. I'm like, my God, what is wrong with people? Like, what are you guys watching that I'm missing? Like, it's just not a better. It's not a better system. Blackie, you say it all the time, and guess what? You are right. At my GameStop, the PlayStation controller, the analog stick, is wearing out. Yeah, a I'm friend of mine, he had to get a new controller. His analog stick, like half of it, chunked off. So you've got cheap <laughs> components, and the other, thing, you'll never get Mooch. You'll never get me ever, ever, ever to give the, the nod to the PlayStation controller until you move the goddamn analog sticks. A grown man can't put his thumbs next to each other like that in any situation or any anything. It doesn't work, man. It's not comfortable. Well, I think it could be like this, man. You have, like, the DualShock 3 to the DualShock 4. Um, I mean, there was a lot of room for improvement on the DualShock 3. There was a whole lot of room as far as the ergonomics, how it fit in your hand compared to the 360 controller. So whenever they, the Xbox One controller was revealed and people held it, ah, it feels good, but there's really not too much to perfect on from the 360 controller. On the other hand, the DualShock 3, they get all that fucking props because now they did something. Well, they should have had it right, you know, with the 360 uh, during those days, but that's what I think it is. It's just that it's just a smaller margin of uh, credibility people want to give the Xbox because there was not much to really improve on to begin with, like the DualShock 3 sucks. The DualShock 4, it's better, but like now you're taking a step back with the this stupid light draining the battery and this touchpad. To me, like I said, when you're moving to the next generation, some of this shit is going to be gone, and that's just how Sony, that's how they roll. Like they're hit or miss with their technology, and the really fucked up thing is, is that a lot of people are just going to turn a blind eye to it. They're going to put Xbox One analog sticks on their DualShock 4s. I've seen videos like this <laughs> yeah. on YouTube, and it's still a better console somehow. Somehow. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, the, the funny thing is is that um, people play up the DualShock 4 like it's the greatest controller ever, right? Um, to me, the Xbox 360 controller was brilliant. The only problem I ever had with that was the D-pad and pack. the... And, well, yeah, the battery pack, and then also the um, the thumb pads. Like I push in on the thumb pads, and those thumb pads would bend in sometimes. Like after a while, like from from that pounding. And so um, I was like, man, they got to do something. You know, hopefully when they redesign it, they fix those things. And they fixed all those things. Like the thumbsticks are great on there. Yeah, phenomenal. You know what I, mean? I like the yeah. grips on the side of them. Yeah, I don't know so. about I don't know about anybody in this panel, but this is the way I'm seeing things. Like Microsoft just seems to be doing me right in all areas. 
they got the best customer service, right? They yeah. treat you like you're important, right? Unlike Sony, they treat you like a third class citizen. And then you got, you know, the best exclusive, the best online, the best controller with those rumble triggers. Now they're gonna improve the UI, they're gonna give you a brand new UI. Then an improve they're gonna improve the Xbox One, meaning that, you know, the hardware itself, the ten percent increase, you know, through the connect, fifteen percent for the ES RAM, and then the twenty percent through, you know, the GPU, and then the fifty percent through the CPU. You got all those things, and then they got rid of the paywall. They're giving you like three amazing E3s, two amazing games come. Like, oh. what else can they do to convince the quote unquote the gamer that they're really serious about gaming? Oh, sorry. No, I was just, no, I was just saying was you just can't get any more to the gamer than the fact that that elite controller is coming out. Because there's no one, listen, there's nothing in gaming. Okay, we talk about the games. Nothing puts the actual gamer into the experience like the controller. And not only do we already have, a, we had a better controller a year ago. Now with this elite controller coming out, it's not just about the, 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 the triggers on the back and all that. Myself personally, what I like about it, it's heavy. I like, I want a heavy controller. Like when you take, listen, you guys are all in the cars way more than I am. But you get behind a BMW, you get behind anything that really grips the, the road, that yeah. steering wheel is heavy when you hold that because that's what you want. When you're controlling something, you want density. And literally, that's you cannot get any better than this. I am so anticipating. I can't wait. I'm, I'm waiting for the uh, – I ordered it on Microsoft Store the, bit, the, the minute we could get it, our hands on it. It says October 6th. I'm hoping they're lying, and it's coming a couple weeks early. Yeah. That thing is going to be a game changer. Are you guys all getting it? I mean, I'm getting it day one. Because, I've already paid for it all. Yeah, way. me too. I'm dying for this thing. I'm pre-ordered and I'm paying mine off, and I think that a lot of people they're gonna they're gonna get this Xbox One simply for this elite controller. A lot of people I think are overlooking just how big the scuff controller market is. That's people right. send the, yeah. their personal controllers in and spend you know over a hundred dollars getting it customized and getting it sent back, and that's that's a process. And that's an expensive process, and so the fact that people are doing this and want to take advantage of having extra buttons and stuff, and you have a first party controller from Microsoft, the company who can actually afford to, you know, <laughs> Make it. If, you know, do the research and development, deliver something decent, uh, just just through financials, uh, they have the ability to do that. I can't wait for that damn elite controller. Yeah. And the I thing saw, is, Tim uh, oh, Dog, go ahead, man. I was saying Tim Dog. He actually played with it. Shout out to Tim Dog. He actually um, tried out the elite controller, and he said to me that it it feels like the right weight, the right design, and on top of that. It has that premium design, that premium look, and that's yeah. what you want in a controller. So yeah, what were you gonna say, man? I was just gonna say that I saw I saw it today. They advertised it at GameStop, but um, or yesterday. But I'm gonna say this, and I don't. I'm, I'm I think I'm pretty much done with games. Uh, GameStop for multiple reasons. For one reason yeah. is is um when you're in there, they really heavily push the PS4, uh, no matter what. Like they, and they're they're not very knowledgeable about you know, gaming in general and things like that. But aside from that, did you guys hear that they're not stocking consoles that have digital games? Yeah, right? I heard so, that. So if there's a bundle with, like, say, an Xbox One bundle, and they're the ones that usually do that. Like, the Madden bundle came with a digital copy of Madden, right? So they're not stocking those, right? But, like, the the uh, PlayStation bundles tend to right. usually come with a physical product, so they are. I think, I think to me... Um, that they're actually kind of using that as a as a bit of an excuse, you know what I mean? Just you, you know because they, and I think that it's fucked up because why you know I, I understand that they sell physical games, but why you know what I'm saying? They're they're a big chain to not do that bundle that that can potentially uh, hurt Microsoft a lot more than it would Sony in the long run. You want to talk about the story that keeps coming up in my head of the mouse that scares the elephant. I can't believe all these little peon stores that like to piss off Microsoft. Why would you try to piss off Microsoft? They're the best. If I opened up an ice cream stand and fucking Microsoft wanted to name the green ice cream instead of chocolate chip mint, they wanted to name it something <laughs> else like Xbox Elite Mint, I'd be like, yes. I will. Do like, they're going to endorse you. They're putting their shit in your store. Half your store is green. Why the fuck would you want to hurt him? Listen, people go, that's bullshit. That would hurt Microsoft. Would it really? Because I don't no. think GameStop could sustain the, their, their business if they pulled out. Yeah. And they only. What if Microsoft tomorrow said, I'm only going Walmart, Target, etc., Toys R Us? You know what they I mean? Should. That's what they should do. Yeah. Like, I think GameStop is hurting the industry. 
they're lashing out, man, by doing that with showing uh, the not having the digital um, bundles. Uh, like, what was it? Forty-one percent of their uh, their total revenue was from used games. Like, this is a direct threat to GameStop, and thank God, hallelujah, fuck those assholes. I, I mean, they, wow. they rip you off. They don't get they they GameStop is literally useless to me unless they have something like the brand new 3DS where you're not really guaranteed to get it unless you pre-order it at a That's game. Right. Shop. That's right. That's Black. it. Otherwise, fuck them. It's digital distribution. Everybody in here, I bet you, has uh, a game that's, you know, bought digitally. Like, everybody in this panel. Yeah. That's, am I correct? Yeah, well, you, and you, you know what's interesting, dude? It's like for me, like this is how I look at it because I, I don't have the best internet. But um, if it's an online game, like say um, Destiny or whatever, I have no problem buying that digital. I still like my discs as far like Forza 6, I bought the disc. You know, I, I have all the all the Forza games on disc. You know what I mean? I collect that stuff. So, But I mean like I, like I'm, I don't mind doing that. Like I have a ton of like the arcade games and stuff like that. Um but as far as, and I know the developers directly get that money, but as far as the as what I've been ordering my games from lately has been the Microsoft Store because they give you $15 per every game that you pre-order from their store, dude. Like, you know, one day, like, I had ordered, I got Rare Replay from them, Gears Ultimate, and um, Madden. Right, I ended up with like forty-five bucks of uh, of money on my Xbox Live account. I think that's a fantastic deal. You know what I mean? And GameStop doesn't give you yeah. anything like that. They rip you off a lot. They be giving me broken games. Then you take a mat. They tell, oh, we don't have no more copies of that game. Yeah, they. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I swear to God, like my buddy, he bought a hundred dollar. It's, it's the Afterglow wireless headset for his Xbox One. These things did not work. Okay, you go into GameStop. He's like. He's like, I'd like to, I'd like to get my money back. And they're like, nope, you no. can't do it. He no. bought these two days ago, okay? At Target, no problem. He'd be able to go in there. He'd have a new pair, whatever he wanted. Walmart, Best Buy, same thing. But, but GameStop, there. She's like, no, you have to get the exact same pair of Afterglow headsets. Yes, I'm like, man, have you ever heard of the warranty of merchantability? And this stupid 17 year old bitch is like, well, I don't know what that is. Well, <laughs> she ended up fucking figuring out what it was. And my buddy got uh, the Xbox One official headsets, but she was sitting here telling him like, "You have to get the exact same headset." You know what I'm saying? And I was like, "Are you fucking stupid? Like, you don't have to give a a, a refund, but you have to fucking give in store credit. That's the law in North Carolina." So I'm like, "Get out of here with that shit!" But you have idiots like that working there. Who? I mean, this. If I didn't go to business school, I would have never known to say that. And I mean, just think of the people who don't have that knowledge. Like, you buy, you pay $100 for something, and it sucks ass, and the company who makes it, you figure out, and they're not so good, but now you have to buy the exact same product again. Yeah. That's how GameStop tries it's to treat your customers. That's disgusting to me, man. Yeah. Let's say if you bought a car and that happened, and they had a recall, and he's like, no, nah, we got to give you the same Lexus that broke. That's yeah, crazy. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah, why they I mean, have laws like that, man. <laughs> um, and, and merchants who own stores – brick and mortar stores, they have to abide by these laws. Like if you just have a tent at a festival, that, that doesn't really apply to you. But whenever you uh it's it's you know interstate commerce as far as your logistics and you have a building and you're advertising and you make revenue and it's documented, hell yeah dude. And yeah. GameStop acts like they're they're um they're yeah, above that. So that that <laughs> shit is gonna crumble, man. I'm telling you, this digital distribution is gonna kill them off, man. I can't wait to see that. Well, do you know you know what GameStop did that kind of pissed me off too? Like they bought out all these old school mom and pop like um you know, game. retro retro stores like we had these these places called Rhino Video Games where they had like all the old school games, NES, Atari, oh, Genesis, man. all that stuff, right? They they bought all these they bought these stores all out. Then they put all the stock into their storage, right? <laughs> they drove up the want and the and the price for these things, right? And then they come out with it now, like when it's like super expensive. You know what I mean? It's like Remember they have fun call land too. They did that to Xenoblade. Yeah, see, when these uh, retro consoles have value, that's when Game um, GameStop they want to jump in. Yeah, they yeah. did that shit to Xenoblade Chronicles, man. They yeah. fucking opened up brand new copies of Xenoblade, and because they were selling on eBay for like $100, they were charging motherfuckers that shit for them used, because they simply just opened them up. I mean, like, that shit to me is just, I, I don't know how you can support them. 
Yeah, you need to go to their website. If you go to their website, they're selling retro games. They were selling like Sonic, uh, Sonic Two for the Sega Genesis for like twenty, like twenty five dollars. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> they go by the eBay prices. That's why. That's what these places do nowadays. They'll check like the high price on eBay, and then what they'll do is they'll just they'll use those prices. They don't even um, bother to like check or haggle or anything like that. Um, real quick, <laughs> World of Tanks is coming to the PS4. How do I know that? Because every outlet is talking about yeah. it. Who, did, who didn't sell us? Who didn't tell yeah. us? Yeah, ain't gonna be on 4K though. Yeah, I mean, let, let me let me just say this real quick. All right, right. This game is good. I never was like, oh my god, World of Tanks, what a great Xbox exclusive, blah blah blah. You know, it's a fun free to play title, sure, but there was never all this hype about it. I mean, it realistically launched on Xbox One without very much fanfare, even though it has crossplay with uh, Xbox 360. Uh, you know what I mean? The 4K textures, all that cool stuff. But now I've already heard more about it on the PS4 than at all on the 360 or the Xbox One. Yeah, so. in one day. Yeah. <laughs> in one yeah day. We I mean, are really pushing it for the PS4 than they ever did for the Xbox the PS4 One. PS4 don't have no games. <laughs> They, need, they, yeah, they, they, they don't have anything. They don't have anything else to talk about this fall. So anytime anything, I said this. If anybody's listening to this show and you're an indie developer, make a ball running into a net or or just like a line that goes back and forth like pong oh, and pong, it bounces yeah. back. <laughs> make something and just put it on a PlayStation exclusive. You're gonna get a lot of money because they don't have anything else. They've got to endorse you. Oh, and they're gonna have those games to make you look like you're stupid. So they're gonna buy them. And they're gonna brag about buying these stupid games, no, no matter the quality, man. You see it all the time in these lists. It's crazy. Yeah, often yeah. as though we haven't really talked about uh, TGS uh, enough. Yeah, um, oh, I mean, I, I watched well, what's your some, take uh, on it, man? You know, I watched like the highlights and stuff like that. I thought that, I, I don't know. I thought it was kind of weak. You know, I was like. The, the Kingdom Hearts thing, it's like another remake. Uh, they're remaking or, or re-releasing some PS2 games or something. Oh, Jesus. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, the, the Gravity Rush, which was a Vita game, and then they're making a sequel to that, which was probably a Vita game at some port, point, and now they're just going to make it on the PS4 because obviously they're not supporting the Vita with new first-party games. Right. So um, I think that, you know, I didn't see anything. There was nothing in there that I was like, oh, my gosh, this is great or yeah, good news. Was terrible. Yeah, I thought it was bad. Everyone keeps rumoring that the uh, what was what was uh, Pro Project Morpheus, which is now PlayStation, PlayStation VR. PlayStation VR, what a brilliant what a, name, right? I mean, come on, being it so generic, man. That name was so generic. Genius. Yeah, I mean, I mean, hey, hey, those guys are really on the ball, right, guys? Come on. Hey, what well, we gotta call? We gotta come up with something for this PlayStation VR thing. Something like PlayStation VR, but not not as bad. And then they're all like, hey, so let's just call it PlayStation VR. So, <laughs> VR. Yeah, yeah. Just have PlayStation yeah. in the name. PlayStation they, VR. They, yeah. they, now, correct me. They didn't show any more or any less than they have in the past. I don't think this thing's gonna make it out next year. Just like everything else with Sony, it's gonna get pushed to the right. Yeah. Well, this is the rumor that I heard. No Man's Sky is going to get pushed back to be a launch title on it because they think it's going to be like a killer app with it. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, to me, I'm, that's, I'm not really sure that that's... Yeah, I'm not really sure that that's going to be a killer app because you're looking at having to buy what's going to be a really expensive setup, uh, a very kind of niche product, in my opinion, and who's really going to spend, you know, say it's $500 um, and then, you know, $70 on the game. You know, you're talking about 600 bucks. It's like at some point you have to say... Uh, you know, this is just a gimmick and, and call a spade a spade because most of us gamers, even if you really like the Kinect, and I did, I had a lot of original Kinect games for 360, and I, it, Ooh, it was fun here and there. Yeah, you know, I like I like it here and there, but at the end of the day, man, I want to kick back with my controller with Halo or Forza or something. You know what I mean? I don't want to be swinging my arms around and, you know, with a big old fucking thing on my head and looking like an asshole, you know? I just, I just don't. <laughs> that I'm makes a lot of sense. This, man. This has got to be said, but I'm sitting here thinking about it. Y'all mentioned No Man's Sky, man. And that's how fucking bad this shit is, guys. People are talking about this stupid fucking game like it matters. Like, this oh, developer is nobody. What the fuck has he made? Like, this game <laughs> is so fucking empty, but yet so full of fucking shit. It's you know a looking I mean? simulator. That's all it is, Blackie. That's a yeah. looking yeah. simulator yeah. where you look at goldfish and animals and trees. That's all you see. But I mentioned this a few a few uh, episodes back. I was like, man, if I was playing a PlayStation One back in its heyday when Twisted Metal was hot, when Parasite E was out, when Siphon Filter was out, and you just showed me some No Man Fucking Sky and said, hey man, this is a PS4 right here, big dog. What? Like, what? <laughs> no, it, it, it's it's at a point where it's so bad for Sony and fanboys are are willing to turn 
their their nose up at whatever they feel the media tells them they need to ignore or whatever, that they'll fucking embrace some shit like No Man's Sky, and you'll see it for multiple E3s and fucking multiple shows. This is crazy. It just, it really just hit me because, like, I mean, you really have hit rock bottom, man. I, yeah. I look at No Man's Sky. There's no, there's nothing in my body or in my mind that says I need to play that shit. I mm-hmm. have Halo. I have Forza. I don't get it, man. That game, that's, uh, that's I, what we say. I was gonna say, as far as TGS goes, this is a simple math equation. Like even the biggest idiot can figure out. All we saw was a few indies, a few remasters, a cross-gen game, and a niche game. You know what I'm saying? And as far as far as and and as far as uh, Kingdom Hearts goes, I just think Square Enix are being pretty shady, you know, towards Microsoft, the Xbox fans, and as Mooch would say, the American people. Yeah, keep it in mind. Yeah. Oh, can you, no, you no, did. No, but yeah, how can you announce? No, no, listen, listen, hear me out. How could you announce Kingdom Hearts 2.8 on the PS4 and have no mention of an Xbox One version of that game? Especially when we're getting Kingdom Hearts 3. Yeah, that's if this it. game is a prologue, it only makes sense to release this game on the Xbox One so the Xbox community who never played this game can catch up on all the story. The media are not calling, calling, them, out, calling them out on that bullshit because if this game... Or if any other game was announced at Microsoft's event, then the media will say, "Oh, is this coming to PS4? Is it going to Sony?" Yeah, you know, you have you have you have NBC, CNN, and the BBC breathing down Phil Spencer's neck, and this <laughs> is the bias shit I cannot understand, and it pisses me the fuck off. Yeah, but one and thing I don't understand though, what what is Sony fans' infatuation with Japan? Like, Japan has not done anything for you. I don't well, really understand. The it. thing I don't understand is. Look, this is a game that has Disney assets, right? And Disney is all Americana. You see what I'm saying? So this game, it only makes sense to release it on the West, you know, for the Xbox One too. Yeah. But it's like they have a sick factuation with Japan, and I don't understand where it comes from. Like, Japan, like, people keep saying crap, gamma, racism, mooch racism. They're right. Japan hate us. That's our enemy. They hate us. They really do. And I don't understand why Sony fans love them so much. It's like I don't understand they never did anything for you. It's like they didn't pay your bills or anything. Yeah, I don't I don't understand. I don't understand what the there's some sort of there's something that's like quote unquote cool right now. It's cool to just like anything anime or something. I don't people are living in the past. Nobody's watching <laughs> nobody watches that shit. Nobody cares. And I mean it, but the thing is, like, you just—it's—it's it's, how many times do they buy American products over there? Is my whole argument. No, they don't we, ever we buy. A, you can't, you can't say fifty-five thousand units sold over the course of twelve months is not a slap in the face. They racist. You definitely know there's a stigma there. You know what I mean? There's a yes. yes. It was Microsoft. There, there's a bit of a double Xbox. standard. I, I watched an interview one time, I think, with one of the original Xbox people. I think John Freeze or one of those guys, and he was talking about how. They were like, well, they told us we couldn't do a, a black box. And he's like, but the PlayStation's black. You know, the PS2 was out at the time. And they're like, well, you can't do this. You can't do that. And it was all stuff that the PlayStation was able to do over there, right? And mm-hmm. then, of course, the Xbox wasn't allowed to do that. There's a little bit of xenophobia going on there as well. Yeah. Um, and then not only that, but you also have the developers just doing what they're doing, you know? Like, um, look, Kingdom Hearts, right? We're getting Kingdom Hearts 3 on Xbox One. A lot of people would like a uh, Kingdom Hearts collection because they've never played it, right? This new Kingdom Hearts thing has, what, a prologue to Kingdom Hearts 3 that I guess Xbox gamers are just expected to hop into Part 3 and not have any yeah, idea what's yeah. going on. It don't make you know no what sense. Mean? Yeah, but people, I'm sure some people in the panel here don't really care for that game, and I get that. You know what I mean? There's a lot of people that don't care, but there are some fans out there. You have to bear in mind there's an 18 to 19 million install base already. I'm putting that number out there because that's what I'm thinking, you know, has sold. Yeah, I, I, I think 16 to 18 as well, something along those lines. Yeah, I agree. So why are Square Enix going to restrict that audience, you know, with this game? They said, I don't understand. They said we're not going to buy that weirdo stuff. The Xbox <laughs> fans are than that. <laughs> No, 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 no. Yeah, but people need to wake up. Like, I don't understand why Sony fans are trapped in the 90s. Like, Japan is irrelevant. When you think about the most amazing games that come out, we think about Gears, we think about Halo, we think about Forza, we think about The Witcher 3, Mass Effect. The highest selling games are not from Japan. They're not from I Japan. I don't understand why Disney it. allows this to go through because anything with Disney assets should be available on all platforms. That's all I'm saying, yo. And I wanted to talk about um, King of Fires 14. 
because that to me looked like an outdated PS2 game. They <laughs> lost their essence and they dropped the ball completely. SNK tried to buy off Dead or Alive and Tekken. You know, they should keep King of Fighters as King of Fighters. They try to go on that whole 3D route and it completely yeah. looked horrible. Well, the space is kind of bogged down anyway because Sony already has Street Fighter, right? And then you have... Yeah. Uh, you know, Mortal Kombat came out, and they're doing a lot of DLC, and then, you know, Microsoft is doing well with Killer Instinct. So I thought that was kind of a dumb, you know, like, who cares at the end of the day? Yeah. Like, King of Fighters, I don't remember the last time I even heard of that about that franchise or cared, but... The last time um, I played was in the 90s, like, for Yeah, Nintendo. same thing with Street Fighter. I mean, I know you guys might have played it more recent, but the last time I really cared about Street Fighter was on the Genesis, so... Yeah, Street Fighter me. That's yeah. my opinion. Listen, I, yeah, we've I mean, seen uh, we've seen glimpses favorite. of what Street Fighter is going to look like, and it doesn't look it looks like a, a better colored cartoon than it was before. <laughs> it doesn't look like anything. Else. What what looked next gen about it? Did anybody get wowed or really that amazed? I didn't think it was that no, big of a deal. I think it Mortal Kombat really Mortal Kombat's going to blow it out of the water. Yeah, but it's basically yeah, you know, it's Street Fighter Four with a coat of paint. That's yeah, all. Yeah. That's yeah. all it is. It got a coat of paint, just like everything yeah, else I, on PlayStation. Mooch, Mooch, you're going to love this next topic, soccer cars. Soccer cars, folks. Um, it's back. Apparently, <laughs> soccer cars away. might be getting a movie, television series, toys, oh all kinds God. of crap. I, I mean, I have never seen anything like this in my life. Soccer <laughs> car movie, soccer car toys, I shit you not, uh, television series. How the hell do you make soccer cars into any of that? I mean, I can see maybe the toys... You know, but how do you do any of that other stuff? I mean, I it's... Wait, so you're telling me it's a merchandise and they're going to turn it into a movie? That's disgusting. Yeah, that, like it says that they are in discussion for a Rocket League film or TV series. Maybe they'll make it like Real Steel. Remember Real Steel, the movie with um, Hugh Jackman? Yeah, I actually, you know what, I like that movie, but still, I mean, Rocket <laughs> Cars, come on, man. <laughs> This yeah, is rocket cars. Good. This is I like... I don't think it'll make any kind of sense having a game like that. I mean, having a movie like that. I I do, you know, you know, you know what game should have, like there should be games that have movies that are well done. Halo, Mass Effect. Yeah. When I think of yeah, but when I think of games that should have a movie, it's not fucking soccer cars. Oh, you know what I mean? Awesome. Yeah. yeah. This is this is only relevant. I mean, the movie thing is just part of part of the snowball effect. Is this movie talk? So this is the latter part. Down, you know, now we now we've turned into a snowball that's going to knock out a village. Like it's literally at the point where we started on this because Sony's had nothing for the past three or four months, so they had to just lock onto this. They have nothing coming up, so this is good media press. There's no way in God's green earth, and I still get people. I still have people, and I'm going to get it after this show. That are like, no, Mooch, you're missing the point. It's still a really fun game. Listen, I, I've said it a million times. Frogger was a really fun game, but nobody gives a shit about Frogger. No. We're past that. We can't just put something out that's just knock a ball. And listen, the mechanics and the and the game physics are awful in it. You ever see the game played? Guy yeah. hits a ball straight on and it goes hook into the left. That car ain't Pele, and that car is not Beckham. <laughs> no, I, I was gonna say Forza Four had a soccer mode, and I made a video about that. You yeah, know that I mean? was actually that yeah, was, you, yeah, you said the real your, soccer cars. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, I watched that one. I thought I thought it was pretty interesting. Like I like that. Um, yeah, but I just to me that's just more like people pushing this crap. And I know this game will probably come to the Xbox One as well. But it's like Jesus, you know? I mean, get yeah, stop pushing this stuff. Like I still see. People hyping up until dawn, you know. Like I'm, I'm afraid. I'm worried that, the, yeah, the media is going to be like kind of out to get Halo Five before it even comes out. I mean, are you going to see as much um, Halo Five coverage as you did Bloodborne or Until Dawn? I, you know, who knows at this point? You know what I mean? I like. I, I hope it. I hope it gets its its deserved uh, attention because it, it looks like it's going to be a fantastic game. Um, another thing that bothers me today, and I don't know why it bothers me as much as it does, but the Minecraft story mode was, you know, the game got announced for like an October release, right? They tweeted out the picture. It looks like this thing's getting advertised as like a PlayStation thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> like the PlayStation boxes are on the front. Microsoft owns this IP, folks. Yeah. But PlayStation, you know, the PS4 boxes on the front. Well, is it the media um, promoting it as a PlayStation game? Well, well, this is the thing, right? Um, a lot of the Telltale games come out digitally a day earlier on PlayStation, and they says, okay, October 13th, it's coming out on PSN, uh, Steam, and iOS, and then on the 14th, it's coming out on, quote-unquote, other platforms, 
right? Not even a fucking mention of Xbox Live. <laughs> so I'm like, Jesus Christ, you know? And then people were even messaging Phil Spencer and Aaron Greenberg and these guys, like, you guys own this IP, getting top billing on an IP you guys own. How is that happening? I mean, the, the, oh, am I overreacting? What the hell? No, you're not overreacting. You're just, it's, I, I think, I don't know if it was Blazin or if it was just um, a Wolf that said it. It's whoever was wrapping up or taking care of the advertising of it, of course, the advertising, somehow. I mean, they, they probably just, I don't know if Sony had any say in it. It was just somehow they could put their, their product in front. I mean, the thing is, is Microsoft is so big. I don't know if they're paying attention to all this stuff. I, I don't know how much their hands are in the dough when it comes to something like this. So, I mean, that, it is that's mind blowing. Crap, you, you're not wrong for questioning it. You're not you're not wrong at all. The the, the actual question is 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 Microsoft um, are they keeping track of this shit? Are they watching yeah. everything? They need to put their foot down. Like they got more money than Sony. They shouldn't be getting kicked around by all these little websites and stuff. They need to start mm -hmm. being like the mafia <laughs> and start banging on doors and stuff. Yeah, they yeah. need to take them up. You know? I like Blazing Phoenix. He's like, they need to be like Phil, the mafia. You know, start Phil, leaning on them. <laughs> Phil doesn't realize. But, Phil you know, does like, not realize how much power he actually has. He doesn't realize that. And sometimes maybe he needs, you know, a kick here and there. Yeah. He need to pull a guy to the side and give him the business. That's hey, what I'm this, saying. I feel like this though. If you really have something, if you really you really know what you got if you really have confidence in whether you bring it to the table you don't need to do all that the the media the ignorance is going to flourish where there's just dumb shit because it's yeah. the only place it really can flourish and gamers are going to enjoy the games people buy the ps4 and some of them are stupid and young and they're not going <laughs> to listen to anybody and a lot of people they honestly just bought the wrong fucking system and I see him every day in my comment section, and I'm telling you that it's you. You don't have to do anything. Microsoft, I think that's why they they're doing everything that they're doing. If you really look at it from, if you look at it from a, uh, if you stand back and look at everything, it's just they're in so many areas: the controller, the UI, the functionality of the cloud, and the, the investment in that, the triple A's. I mean, they're gonna fuck up Sony more with what they're doing with the Xbox in the future than they could with any, you know, just muscling them or anything. Yeah, but the thing about it, look, look, the way I'm looking at it, the way I'm looking at it is like, you see the media, they're like a beehive, you know what I'm saying? And and they could say any kind of shit or whatever, and that shit will buzz all over, you know what I'm saying? Like, it will, it will be widespread. It will go float on airways. And that's just the way it is. And I know it's sad, but it's true. So that's yeah, like, the point where are you going to do that? And people are going to keep buying it. At a certain point, people are going to just, they're not going to take you serious. And the alternative media, all of us are good sources because not only can we talk about it, but you can see us playing the games. Like, there's more of a connection there. Yeah, I mean, true. I, I don't know. Like but, but the message that the media spread is towards the casuals. You know what I'm saying? They're the ones that are going to eat it up and That's they're the right. ones that are going to comply. That's right. So people like us, we're smart consumers. We're not going to fall for that bullshit. We're going to do our research, right? But you know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, with the casuals and, and saying that, look at the Wii U. Look how it works. <laughs> look, look, like, that thing was for such the casual, and then the hardcore gamer was like, fuck this, man. I think it's going to happen to the same thing with the, the only, PlayStation 4. The only mistake I believe they did with the Wii U is that they named it the Wii U. If they named <laughs> it something else, I think, like, look at the casual, casuals will probably think, it's just another Wii. You see what I'm saying? It's it's nine different, even though it's a more powerful console. But they would think it's still a Wii. So naming it the Wii U was like the biggest no-no, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree, man. The Wii U. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, if you look at this, okay, like we're not usually big on the Nintendo talk, but they did name a new president. I don't know his name offhand, but it seems a, like a little bit like old garb to me. Like he's old school. Like why? That seems a little bit like a mistake. You know, look what Microsoft did, right? They put in a like a like a real gamer, Phil Spencer, young guy. You know what I mean? Uh, that's what that's what they needed. I'm kind of worried with Nintendo's direction because they put in this guy who, well, he did say that he thought still. I mean. You know, Look, that, if you're gonna put an old fart there as president, man, you, you know, <laughs> there's only so much you know you can expect. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, when they're they still not gonna mission. learn. They're still, yeah, they're still not gonna learn. When they showed his picture, I just tweeted it back out, and I was like, "This guy looks like fun." Like, <laughs> <laughs> see that picture? He looked like he already died. Bring Iwata back. 
Nu kvar. Det är bra, det är mycket. You got to see, you got to see the trend. Look at how, look at how amazing Microsoft was the stiff board for years and years and years, right? So they go from Bomber, then we got Nutella. Nutella now, this guy here is awesome, man. He's he's basically Microsoft's side of what you know Steve Jobs was. He came, he comes out. He's wearing a button down shirt. He's chill. He's it's un it's untucked. He's wearing a pair of fucking loose jeans. He's just chill. He's up there in moccasins. He's like, listen, everybody, relax, relax. Windows 10's great. Somebody hand me a fucking drink. You know, like that's my kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get one thing. Unlike Sony, he's a minority. That's true. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, I will say this. Like Microsoft, Microsoft pushes, um, you know, minorities. They push the women too. Like I've never seen a woman on stage for Nintendo or Sony. I but Microsoft has, yeah, they have, and they don't get the credit for that, right? Like Microsoft seems to be pushing a lot of that stuff. Yep. You know what I mean? Well, like, even like Apple were doing it too. Like you know, yeah, very diverse. Microsoft and Apple, I'll give them credit yeah. completely. Uh, yeah, not, not Sony, not Nintendo. They don't like women. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, that could. That, well, uh, what are you trying to say, please? They're Come weirdos, on, man. They, they don't like women. They got the gay station for. Oh my gosh, dude! Oh, you're gonna start getting people hating on, hating on you now, man. Now you're gonna be yeah, like, no, oh man. Oh, I, I love being like, it's whole, whole sorry thing. to shift. Uh, so, so, um, you know, sorry to shift the uh, shift the subject right now. But I want to talk about Resident Evil Umbrella Corpse. Now, this game to me looked like a last generation game. <laughs> Now, have you played that game, Resident Evil um, Operation Raccoon City? Yeah, I did. It's I, on the same engine, same mechanics, same kind of gameplay, but it's a multiplayer-focused game. And I thought yeah. PlayStation gamers don't like DRM and multiplayer-focused games. Don't you remember that shit? Is it an online-only game? There's no campaign for it. It's online-focused. Yeah, like oh, okay. Online shooter. Well, well, you know what's interesting about... Um, Operation Raccoon City, that was originally Battlefront, Star Wars Battlefront Online uh, by Slant 6 or one of those developers. And then when they, they their, their product got canceled and they turned it over, I guess there was even some coding for Battlefront left in there. So that's why um, it was like that or whatever. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, you know, like to me, that's not a big deal. That's not a like Resident Evil game that's going to get a lot of people excited. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, they need you know, their so own kind of third-person shooter, like a Gears of War style of game. But Sony fans don't be... play online. Well, that's what I thought. Uh, I thought they're really against, you know, online only. Yeah. But they seem to be playing Destiny. They're going to be playing The Division like crazy. Mm -hmm. They're going to be playing like online. Mm -hmm. I know, right? Yeah, well, hey, they don't like online, they don't like DRM, but they love PlayStation Now, and oh. you know what I mean? And they, you know, to me, it's just like it's there's a lot of hypocr hypocrisy. I mean, there's some on both sides as well. Like, I'll be the first one to admit that. Like, sometimes, yeah. like, just as an entertainer or whatever, I'll say something just to get a rise out of people. Or yeah. like, had Microsoft had Xbox One one. MPD or whatever, I would I would have rubbed that shit in like no other. Do I actually care about it? <laughs> no. No. But would paid. I have been like I would have been like yeah, suck on that bitch, yeah. <laughs> you know I would have done that, you know. And so like that's just how I am. Oh, know, by the way, I was saying, Mooch, your favorite game, Bloodborne, is getting DLC, man. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I, I saw that, Wolf. I'm glad you brought that up. Literally, here's another. Here, listen, what they're doing. So Sony, right? DLC for Destiny. DLC for Bloodborne. What else could come out? What else is going to be coming up for their fall lineup that is not already in everybody's house? I mean, how pathetic is that? And that, and that literally is a big deal. Like I, One guy actually on my, my Twitter, he follows me for some reason. He doesn't give any hate or anything, but he's like, thank God DLC's coming up for Bloodborne. I've been waiting for that. I'm like, <laughs> you, you and 15 other people. Like, who gives a shit? Like, it's unbelievable that that two DLC packages – are what PlayStation fans are looking forward to this holiday season. Could you imagine that? Like, we spent the first half of this show talking about Forza, talking about Halo. Like, the and we didn't even breach Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider, and that's that's yeah. like insane. Like, there's so much. And then we have my God, the first half of next year is stacked for Microsoft. I know that they have Uncharted on PlayStation, but that's really it. That's just one so, game. It's one game, and I think you won't see anything else the rest of next year except for, like, Fat Princess and shit like that. Uh, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, this is crazy, though, right? I mean, you're right. Good call on that, Wolf. That's literally – so that's two DLCs they have to look forward to for the entire holiday. <laughs> DLC. Why do they have to use – why do they have to use, like, one of their presses to announce some of this shit, man? It don't make no fucking sense. It was on the weekend. 
they have no content. That's all it is. That's why they announced DLCs yeah. there, man. Yeah. Look at the Taking King. And that's they not have a console for that shit. Yeah, that, that's horrible. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely not no they content. Did. And you know what? One of the sad part is that thing. Like I did, like a lot of people buying that console, right? And I'm not even. And you know me, I'm not sugarcoating that shit. I mean, I was in GameStop, dude. People lining up to buy that console. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Yeah, I'm telling you, dude, like like Sony, as much as we want to say, oh, well, and they are, they're really dropping the ball on their exclusives, they, for some reason, are suckering people with these damn consoles. I don't get it. It's a DLC. It's yeah, but, a white console. Come on, people. Yeah, wake Sony, the fuck up. Sony this is the thing, thing like, for the people, Sony fans, though. People the love Sony collecting things. People love collecting things, and that's the thing, and Microsoft, in my humble opinion, they need to do more of these kind of bundles where they have a custom... You know what I mean? Like a limited edition console. If you're Look gonna, at all if the you're, ones that you saw. Look at all the ones you saw at Comic Con. You know what I'm saying? Well, they have, they Fallout have... 4 is coming out, and they don't. They don't. They have the, the giveaway one, but they that should be Fallout 4 should have a Pip Boy that's in the same shape and color of an Xbox. So it's all it's all wrapped around and it's designed and it does little noises the same way that the machine does in the game. Fallout 4 has such an elite, like uh, such a uh, following, an allegiance that's unbelievable, and they're not taking advantage of that. They're paying for that. In, Advantage, but they're not using it. I don't. That's yeah. what I don't understand. I don't. Yeah, they have the marketing right for that game, right? So they yeah. should make the most of it. Yes. Yeah, I mean, you get you get Fallout Three free if you buy it, and you know, and same thing with um, Just you know, Cause, Rainbow Six, and Just Cause, right? They got some good, some good things, but um, it seems like they aren't doing as good a job as uh, you know as Sony is with the like special edition consoles and all that stuff. You know what I mean? I just. And I, I, controllers, they need to do more like you know. When it comes to special edition, though, man, I think that Microsoft they just they knocked it out of the park with the Forza console. This thing yeah. makes car sounds when you turn it on. And yeah. It makes the the impact gun sound whenever you eject the disc. And all the PlayStation consoles, all I'm saying is like just you know stickers and just it's just bullshit. They're not really taking that extra step, whereas Microsoft is, man. I really. You know, I, I'm gonna admit the Battlefront run looks like dog shit. It just looks like a sticker on there with Darth Vader. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's trash. Yeah, that was trash. But everybody that said it looked really good, I think, just was getting. They were just in a uh, shock at the moment. I think every you ask everybody that did a video or was talk, now they're like, yeah, it's okay. You know what I mean? It, 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 you know, it's 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 just it looks very bland. Once you soak it soak it all in, you realize that, you know, what the fuck is it? This is just a sticker. It's just a decal. That's all it is. It's a normal, yeah. regular black PS4 with a decal on it of Darth Vader. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, like, I'm going to close with this real quick because uh, it's. Well, I need to wrap it up. It's about 10 o'clock here, and Mooch has got to go, and i got to go and stuff. But uh, if Microsoft does buy AMD... And that that would be huge news because they would effectively be able to drop the price of the Xbox One since that would mean that the chips were made in house at that point. Um, you would look at probably probably a two forty nine to one ninety nine, um, you know, price point, and I think that that's what they're probably aiming for. Next year, you're going to see a relaunch of the Xbox One. It's going to be a slim. Uh, they're going to kind of rebrand it, and I think that's going to be highly successful. It's going to get a price drop, and uh, I just I think that Microsoft is they're far from done. A lot of people act like only one can do well, and if and if and if one's doing well, the other can't. I think Microsoft is doing extremely well. I think they're going to pass over 20 million consoles sold this holiday. I bet I would guarantee that by the end of the year they are going to be over 20 million, and you might hear something about it because they actually did come out and say seven million over seven million Xbox One owners. Play Forza series so far, you yeah. know, and, and that's yeah. good. You know, they they're, they even they hype that up. I like that. They're like, hey, we're the best place to play racing games. They said that. That's what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? Now, that's what they should be focused on. Seven million Forza players on the Xbox One. Now, just think about it, Dave. Let let that soak in. We've had Forza Five, Forza Horizon Two, and Forza Six. Now, think about the possible sales that those games have done. Think about the sales. Yeah, but yeah. I think Microsoft need to do more of that. Like, you know how Kuda Sanudo always comes out and throw little jabs? They need more of that. They really yeah. do. Oh, I agree. And it's, and it's, you know, going back to that AMD thing that you were talking about, crap, all yeah. I'm saying is if Microsoft buy AMD, besides NVIDIA, they would own gaming, period. Because, look, Nintendo using AMD uh, GPUs, you got, you know, um, the PlayStation doing it. 
the, the next NX from Nintendo, they're going to be using, you know, I think they have a contract with AMD. They will own gaming period, and all yeah. their in-house things, they could, po- they could possibly make the best GPU for their next Xbox. Yeah. It's going to be a monster. It'll be, be a the beast. Console ever made. They're probably equivalent to, like, 10 times, you know what I'm saying? 4K, yeah. 120 frames a second. I, I agree. Um... All right, well, apparently somebody just tweeted me a thing. If you guys uh, are in the preview program, they're sending out the first batch of invites to the uh, to the new dashboard and the Windows 10 update. So you might want to check and see if you're going to get that. They're starting to roll that out very shortly. I hope I get that because, again, I can't get my damn alerts. Oh, yeah, for, to the Sony yeah, fans, just, where, where's uh, your update at? Where's uh, your update, Sony? Um, the last update bricked their console. <laughs> <laughs> well... They're gonna, they're gonna get an update and get an update to fix that update because that update fucked it up. So that I mean that's kind of what they do. So I want to thank Blackie who his mic is muted. He's busy. Uh, Blazing Phoenix man, you did a good job. I appreciate you coming on the show. Iron Wolf, great job as always. Mooch, great job. Uh, check out all these guys' channels. They all have a YouTube channel. They all really do good, really good content. Mooch just dropped a new video yeah, today. I want to say one thing. Yeah. I should, do want to say thanks to everybody. My video has been out for about four hours, and I got well over a thousand views. Thank you to everybody. There's a lot more coming. I'm actually recording a few things this week. I'll be on vacation next week, but I'm uh, recording a few, so I have a few things to put out next week as well. Hey, so, Mooch thank you. Might be doing his own podcast uh, Friday night. Me and Friday him. Night, and, yes. uh, I'll you know, so you guys you know, let everybody know that. Yeah, so Friday night. Yeah, this is Black Lebowski. Yeah. Hey, Sony need to do a fucking update for your buyer's remorse, man. <laughs> out, of out of control, man. Thanks. For, hey, I had the mic muted for a second. The uh, lady was watching the movie. It's kind of loud, so I don't want to be. Uh, <laughs> no, dude, it's all right, man. I appreciate you. I appreciate you stopping by, man. Uh, love your content, dude. All you guys, man. I appreciate it. This has been Xbox Nation. Oh, you just bodied out. <laughs>